Sadistic Penguin Studios presents It's, it's getting, getting Drafty in Here. Drafty old farm. The show of drafting random nonsense. I choose business ethics. And now, coming to you from his basement, a.k.a. Draft Headquarters, your host and draft master, Magnificent Stan. Hello, welcome to episode 13 of It's Getting Drafty in Here. I am your host, Magnificent Stan, and today we'll be discussing my favorite topic in the world, professional wrestling. Uh, with me today, uh, I'm going to go right down the line here. With me today, I have uh, comic punk guy of Punk Driver. How you doing, buddy? Doing as good as I always am. Good to be right here. Up. Happy to be here. Right <laughs> Funny. so real quick what was your origin in wrestling when did you start watching professional wrestling oh man uh, a babysitter came over and uh at the time it was towards the end of the wcw invasion angle on monday night raw and i saw the big show and the uh eight-man tag match at the end of monday night raw by just vertical suplexing booker t and after that all the big impacts. That was it. We're in. We're in love. We're watching wrestling every single week. So, like, roughly like twenty years now. Then. Oh yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. Uh, joining me for his like thirty seventh appearance on "It's Getting Drafty" in here, my buddy Yumper from the Yumper and Svo Show on the Sadistic Penguin Studios. What's going on, Yumper? How's it going, man? Good. 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 Um, same question. Origin of, of wrestling. Uh, so mine actually started probably when I was like four years old. Uh, I saw the 89 Royal Rumble, but I didn't see it live. Uh, we used to go to, you know, our movie rental store and they used to have the old Royal Rumbles up there that came out on VHS. So I would rent them and watch them along with uh, the WWF WrestleMania and other pay-per-view Survivor Series. And then my first live event watching through the um, pay-per-view was 92 SummerSlam. And since then I was like completely hooked. Uh, watching it, you know, through the 2000s and then kind of fell off and got back into it when Punk came back and Daniel Bryan and then uh, kind of fell off again. But yeah, I've been watching for almost like 30 years, just on and off the wagon. I, th I think all wrestling fans do yeah. that. Um, yeah, just, yeah. Like everything gets you get complacent with the product and then you and you just kind of step away for a bit and then you go back when something something new, something fresh happens, which rare, rare but still. These days, yeah. a little, a little more fresh, a little more new, but a little different because everybody's jumping like maniacs. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. But all right. And then uh, the, this is his first appearance on any of my shows in the mm -hmm. history of the world. Um, mm -hmm. The 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 proprietor of Baloney Club, it's the sweet, um, winner of the what region was that? What were you in? The one hundred eight region uh, by the skin of my teeth. Um, <laughs> Boy, I, beat my, won? I beat my won? wife by the skin I, of my teeth. You beat your wife in a in a in the online tournament. Caveat: I beat Thank my you. wife in an online poll. Um, Thank you. I want that, you know, in writing. Thank you. I didn't. I'm not, I don't. I don't want to get canceled tonight. No. So. No. 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 But uh, yeah. Thank you all. <laughs> no, you're right. Hi then, bud. <laughs> so, Damn. um, origin of wrestling, right for you? Um, I have three vivid memories, and and, um, Johnny. Uh, my cohort in uh, the Chicago sports bums. We uh, we grew up together. We remember watching wrestling at my uncle's house. He would order the pay per views for all of our cousins. Um, the first thing I remember is um, earthquake ripping the chain off of Hulk Hogan, and that made me cry as a kid. I hated that. The Stop. other thing I remember was Papa Shango making people puke. And that was I the also, ultimate warrior. Yeah. He made his head I, bleed. Yeah. And I also hated oh, that. Yeah. So okay. as a kid, those two memories are like seared in my brain. And the last one, the first pay-per-view I remember watching and like, you know, being ready to watch and like attentive for was the uh, Caesars Palace uh, WrestleMania. Um, with like when Hogan Zuna and Hogan came back and all of that stuff. That's so that's that, considered by many as the worst wrestling. It's ter it was ever. terrible. <laughs> it, was, it was terrible. But as a kid, I was like, we got a pay per view, and like, yeah. 
you know, it didn't matter because otherwise, like like Yump said, it was going to the video store and renting uh, the the VHSs. That's a lot oh, yeah. of my my wrestling memories up until shout out Uncle Paul. He's my godfather. He would order the pay-per-views for us. So um, that was awesome. So I appreciate that. Right on. So for me, I so I'm 42 years old. I started watching wrestling when I was it was probably like three somewhere around there um Andre and Hogan and um you know the the very very early remnants of like the the takeover of Vince McMahon in, in the in the business um I was there for it my dad took me to see Hogan Kamala at Rosemont in like 85 Bless. um I was freaking yeah I was just freaking hooked after that so um I'm like Yumper though. I've had some stretches where I just kind of like, oh fuck this for a while. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think I think I, I think I gave up for a while in the 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 like the late two thousands up until like the mid twenty tens, and then Daniel Bryan again, just like you, Daniel Bryan brought me back into the business because I liked American Dragon, and um, when he when he rose in the WWE, that underdog story kind of just brought me back in, and I've I've stuck to it since. So yeah, that's that, like that's my... hand. Sorry, don't interrupt. Hand up. Yeah, like I, I missed. I missed like all of the ruthless aggression era for the most. I, did, part. I didn't watch most of that. Yeah, 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 yeah a lot. A lot. I've, I mean, I've since watched it going yeah, back and yeah, watch it, but yeah, but, but live. Yeah. You know, like when you're a kid, you watch the the raws, the nitros, everything live, and then up until a certain point, the ruthless aggression era. I, I'm a blind spot. That's a blind spot for me. Sorry, Roxy, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I totally get like missing that era and like yeah, just going to the video store. I remember like renting him and watching him like so like the nineteen um ninety Survivor Series is probably like my favorite pay per view, just because I love that match with when the Undertaker debuted against yep. uh, the Heart Foundation, That's Coco Beware, one. and uh, Dusty Rhodes. And I just mm -hmm. love like how that end, even though like uh just how it ended. You guys see like Bret Hart kind of breaking out as a solos wrestler oh, yeah. when he went against a uh, Million Dollar Man in that match. That was. Like that's what got me. That got me hooked. And then when I saw them go with Wembley, I was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, that was that awesome. Was, that was a moment when they when they put the Intercontinental Title match in the main event. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I always thought I always I always wondered why they never put the the belt on the, the main belt on uh, on Bulldog because because he because he was able to carry that 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 uh mm -hmm. that uh that show. Um, you would have thought he would have been able to carry carry more. You know, I um, would say probably the promos. He was that, lacking yeah. in the mic work. Yeah, the the yeah, mic work for Bulldog there. was lacking. He had everything else. He could wrestle. Everything else. He had the uh, look. Yeah. Everything else was on point. But I would say probably the mic work for, for Bulldog. So yeah, the steroids didn't help either. That's right, yeah. John. Because well, then, then well no, but you got to think of the era because well, it was like the mid mid nineties when he was really starting to main event stuff with Shawn Michaels, stuff with Bret Hart, stuff with oops, I didn't grab that one better. Um and then that's when all the steroid trials started to happen. So they, yeah. they had to pull that guy to the side. That's when he went back. To, that was when he went to WCW yeah, for a while. That was part of the reason. And then like, uh, right. I'm, well, since Peter's a big Shawn Michaels, Mark, I'm a big Bret Hart, Mark. So uh, like I read his book. Because you're just going to fight. No. Yeah, and he well, was uh, basically get, in his book. He talks about like Bulldog was actually like high on crack. Yeah. Like, he had, he, well, he, had, he had really bad. He had, he had really bad muscle problems. He had problems with his shoulders, his back, everything. And. Medication, baby. I mean, um, we could we could do a wrestling yeah. substance abuse draft in and yeah, oh, sure. we, yeah, we could do I mean, first, never first, yeah. first pick yeah. snake, snake Roberts for sure. Yeah, yeah. so or, that's a that's first, a different draft. Yep. I think like when you go into a video store and and you were able to grab anything, I I got, I got the summer of punk uh really late, like I really late. Like I went when I got back to uh Chicago after being uh on the east coast. I went to like the last video store rental place near my parents' house. And I was like, I just need something. I need wrestling. There was no like uh, streaming services or anything. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I got was the Summer of Punk on DVD. And it was like the best thing I've ever seen. Yeah. And then, surely, you know, at that point, I think Punk had been back. With, yeah, yeah, he had been back at that point. And it was like falling right back in love with something that you thought left you a long time oh, yeah. ago. I, 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 I'm adamant. I love the summer of punk and maybe I'm a homer, but it's that storyline got me back big time into wrestling. He's been able to do it 
you know, two times in, in within, you know, within two different promotions. So it's, it's a phenomenal, you know, template for people who are coming up or coming out. Yeah. Well, let's get, let's get started with the draft real quick. I just want to, for, I know we have some some of our buddies that, that aren't wrestling fans that don't understand what stable wars means or what a stable is. So I did make a little graphic for everybody. Um, I, I stole this definition from like, literally I just wrote, what's a stable into into google and it was a pretty good definition so stable is a group of wrestlers within a promotion who have a common element friendships either real or storyline a common manager and a common storyline would put them together as a unit um so essentially uh essentially you're you're a gang <laughs> it's a group of dudes that that have a common goal so um and then we did have some some rules for this draft so we're doing five rounds um and then uh, let me make that a little bigger. So each stable must consist of you have your you have your main you know your your leader your main event guy and then another singles wrestler that would be like your secondary guy a tag team. Um, we're a little little lenient on what constitutes a tag team, but you do have to uh, define some type of connection if it's not an actual team that had been you know together. Um, a manager or a mouthpiece, you know, valet, bodyguard, whatever you want to call it, and then one female singles competitor. So. So that's our rules, and we're sticking to them. Um, so let me get this screen back up, and let's get started. CPG, you have the number one pick. I do. I got the number one seed, and what I'm saying across pro wrestling as a whole, you guys cannot get better if you're trying to get a foundation for a stable foundation for anything. My number one pick, Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle. Wow. Whoa. Whoa! You suck. That's a good one. That's a. Th- granted, I was not expecting that. It's a great I, pick. Explain your pick, please, because please, yeah, that was my pick. My pick lays the foundation for what I want to look for in a stable. He gets everybody. He gets your technical wrestling fans from 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 the from the book. He gets your American wrestling fans from the, from the fact that they're at the Applebee's and they want to see more Americans. <laughs> And he uh, won a gold medal with a broken won, freaking neck. Exactly. He won a gold medal with a broken freaking neck. Uh, Kurt Angle in his entire career has shown how he can do everything. Yeah, He is probably one of the best, uh, you know, gifted, you know, collegiate to Olympic level athletes to ever make the transition. He's probably one of the mo- most legit badasses in the history of business. As oh, well. yeah. Nobody, yeah, yeah. Nobody yeah. would mess with him. Nobody would mess with him. Maybe Haku. Uh, yeah. yeah Haku, Jeez, maybe. Maybe. Oh, shit. Haku, yeah. Haku will just bite his nose off, but, you know. Yeah, Haku has already probably taken a, taken a bite out of this draft. Yeah. But, you know, Kurt Angle, he transcends every – like, he is, legit, is legitimately the entire package. <laughs> I hope, <laughs> I hope that they're related because maybe you can teach everything you do. Can you imagine trying to run the third base and you're caught and you put an angle lock before you can get there? I think Sam's more worried about him having that dump truck than he is anything. <laughs> I only I know it. I only know wrestlers from Adam Sandler movies. <laughs> oh man, that was awesome. That was oh, I was not man. expecting that. that was no, a great you know what, Kurt Kurt Angle, if if you told me to make a match between two guys and it's just about the match he would be part of that match. Like he, he is, he could go, he could, when he would run across the ring and jump onto the top rope and flip people. Like when he did that to Kane in WrestleMania, like boom, fucking just unbelievable stuff. Um, he paid for it. You know, we could go back to the topic of uh, a drug, a wrestling drug draft. He would would probably be a first round pick. I mean, he used to, he used to, he used to eat like 42 Vikes a day, just to just to kind of function as a human being, so um, he paid his price. But yeah, he he is uh, one of the most gifted professional wrestlers ever, and he was fucking great on the mic. Timing was perfect. Um, one thing about Angle that I will say, and, and we didn't mention it now because you're right, he can go. Yeah, he had cardio for days, strength like unreal strength Freak, for man. a guy's size. Mm-hmm. The comedy, the comedy that he can do, dude. Um, is unmatched for the milk for truck like, yeah for for somebody that came into uh wrestling late in his career you know like he had yeah. a career 
all before he even came into wrestling. And the fact that he could get the timing right for like, you know, like the cowboy hat with Austin and just a bunch of different comedy. Gimmicks and like all the sexual, had. all the sexual tension he had with Stephanie McMahon. Fucking underrated. Phenomenal. Oh, dude. The- the the sexual tension he had with Booker T's wife Charmel, <laughs> where he uh, where Vince got him, made him say bestiality sex, yeah, <laughs> yeah, not, yeah not knowing yeah. what bestiality sex meant. Yeah, absolutely, Joey is that what Baloney's doing after the show? We're gonna talk about that later, but uh, <laughs> tune in. Uh, Joey P is in the comments <laughs> saying uh, the tune Cena in. rap battle. The Cena rap battle was awesome. Yeah, that was really good. What did you guys know that he almost went to ECW before WWE? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was about oh, to bring yeah. that up. That he. He got mad because of the Raven. Um, yeah, it was the it was the exact it. night they did the the crucifixion. Yeah, in the in the ring with Raven and Tommy Dreamer, and he's like, Simon, if my Simon. name, what did he say? He's like, if my name shows up on this, I'm gonna sue your ass or something like that. Oh, yeah. Man. All right, Get, Yump. What do we got for uh, for your pick here? Man, that was a that was that was a good pick, but uh, yeah, a bit of a rattlesnake there. I'm gonna go with this one. Give me a hell yeah. I set you up, didn't I? I said, yes. give me a hell yeah. Like, I couldn't go without picking Stone Cold as my number one pick if he was there for me. He was probably one of the, the popular, most popular wrestler during his era. He made the most money, although yep. he wasn't that his technical skills kind of d- diminished a little bit since before oh, yeah, so knees and his due to his neck, neck being broken. Yeah. But dude drew crowds, dude was gray on the mic. And everybody, did, he had a limited set of moves. He was like the 90s version of Hulk Hogan, just better. And, and the fucking crowds came out for him all the time. He, I think he's, and he did it by just money. being himself, too. Like, yes. that was the cool thing. Like, they, 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 they ran out of ideas for him. They gave him that fucking ringmaster thing. They just ran out of ideas for him and they just told him, be yourself. And, and, and he took it and he ran with it. And even though he could not perform most nights, he still went out there and did it because. I don't know how, you know. And if he was healthy today, like, I mean, even healthy, just imagine the matches he could have with the up and coming talent that were out there. Like he was gone too soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he'd have had, I mean, if they'd have, if they'd have bottled his ass up in that gimmick, uh, you know, two years earlier, they could have stretched mm-hmm. that out. He could have had a run with Bret Hart to the point where Bret Hart would have said, "I'm not leaving. I'm sticking around with this fucking guy around here." But even um, that short that short run with Bret Hart, that Iron Man yeah. match, like that, well, Bret made was, it. Bret initially made him. I mean, and and, was, and, Bret, uh, and and Bret's way to turn him from the heel in the situation to the face in that situation. Those hmm. those two were magic together. Yeah. To have him not tap out at WrestleMania 13, you know, bloody and, and all that. Yeah, the I, whole, was, I was there. That was a memory, uh, man. That's, and, a, that, that's you know, a, like a P1 memory. Brett also said that he saw Steve coming before Steve did. Like he saw, he wanted Vince to sign him right away because when he yep. got fired, and all, and it also like stuff stuff that doesn't like get recognized is his shit in ECW with Monday Night Nyquil. <laughs> like he just yeah. stupid, like promos. That, just but that promos. was that was Steve being himself too. Mm-hmm. Like that that and you you have to give credit to Paul Heyman because I think he pulled him out of that shell a bit, and he was a great heel in WCW. He was a great heel. Like he could have. He could have carried that company with WCW, but you know you had Bill Watts, Jim Hurd, and then you had Ole Anderson. They just didn't know what to do with him. And then by that time, they were like, "Oh, this guy's phenomenal." Hogan was in there, and there was there was just no spot for him anymore. The receding hairline didn't do him any justice in WCW. Oh no, no. no. Oh, story old as time professional wrestling. As soon as he went bald, that was that was the gr- that was the right call. One of my favorite <laughs> lines, Shankster, is when he uh, said, "If you want to know what I think about the Hitman, just put an S in front of his name." <laughs> that was a pretty all right roxy agrees i'm definitely the um the stone cold steve austin of white Sox twitter what <laughs> <laughs> all right um i mean if you notice my name is what um what? so and that, I, that that have you ever heard the origin of that it was the just it, the origin of what like the stone cold thing oh the what is yeah. him just driving around with edge and christian and 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 christian would talk to him like that he would he would ask him like really quick short questions and just go what and that's and that's how the whole what thing happened is he just started doing it one day on on camera and they're like holy shit this is amazing so you can you can thank edge and christian for that one can you imagine that like you're 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 riding around and you know like maybe a a trip out to cincinnati or some other place and the entire time you're like hey should we stop what 
<laughs> Is the kid go to I, Waffle I House? We, you know, what? I gotta use the bathroom. What? What? <laughs> not not annoying at all. No, 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 no. All right, Baloney Club. What do we got? All right. Um, I'm glad. Uh, I wasn't sure how this draft was gonna start. My number one with a bullet and a big reason I'm a wrestling fan is I think he's the best voice in wrestling by far. And we could talk about tag teams being even and even main event stars, you know, you know, the best world champions in the world. There is only one person that could lead a stable. Um, and that's Bobby Heenan. I love Bobby Heenan. I, wow. I a big reason why I uh, am a wrestling fan to this day is Bobby Heenan. Will you stop? Well, he was so good <laughs> at what he does. Uh, the manager in the first round. Manager in the first round because he Dang. can talk better than anyone else. And, and I'm sure people are going to draft other managers. And there's one currently that I will not name, but he uh, is pretty damn good. But there's no one like Bobby Heenan. The 92 Rumble is still my favorite pay-per-view, not because of what happened in ring, but because the, of the, the whole Rick Flair here, thing, right? Rick Flair thing. Oh and my Bobby God, it's Heenan so good and stuff like that. Bobby Heenan is better at what he does than anyone else. Um, the Weasel, the Weasel. He's... I have him back here. I have him right back here, and, it's, and he's a Chicago uh, boy. And yeah. it's criminal yeah. that the one of the only you know figures is him in the Weasel suit. But I have it back there, and uh, I love him. So I was happy to that that fell to me. Was it a reach? Probably, but he's still my favorite wrestler, or you know, not manager or anything. Voice in wrestling, he's my favorite by far. Good one, Aloni. I sure. had him on my list if it would be my manager, and I thought yeah. nobody was going to take he's him. Number one on everybody's list, yeah. I would assume. So, so yeah, the way I there. the way I figured it, and the way I like I was like you know kind of game planning is like. You know, we could talk about world champions and there's 10 that can really go first round or, like, yeah. you know, like there's a bunch of people. Tag teams are a dime a dozen um, mm -hmm. and we'll talk about them later. But the voice of a stable really has to go. And I think he's by far the best voice in wrestling. I yeah, I, in, ter in terms and in and in. You ever watch you ever watch the old episodes of primetime wrestling with oh, Gorilla? They're great. In the studio, that shit's fucking like he was so good that USA Network offered him a talk show. Yeah, it's like that no how shit. good. Yeah, but he just he didn't have time. Like they they did a couple of pilots for him, and they thought it was freaking hilarious, but it just it just didn't work out. He just didn't have time to do it, and he and he wanted to stay on the road. He wanted to do he wanted to continue to manage, and he you know and he hurt his neck then. Fucking Ultimate Warrior. Um, <laughs> You know, Dude. he did all his weasel suit matches and an ultimate warrior just stiffed the shit out of him. Like, come on, he's a fucking oh, sure. 50 year old manager, you know. But yeah, his, yeah, the voice he was the voice of wrestling for for my childhood for the most part. Mm -hmm. Him and him Same. and Gorilla and Jesse and you know, I also watched I watched old, you know, Georgia like Georgia Pro and all that shit with, with Gordon Soley. That guy's voice was phenomenal okay. as well. So, but so like in my head, when I when I think of watching wrestling as a kid, it's Gorilla Monsoon, it's Bobby Heenan. And it's Howard Finkel. Those are the guys oh, that in well, my Howard head, Finkel. that's what I think about. Have you ever seen the video of uh of uh Drew Gall not Drew Gallows, the uh oh it's Drew Gallows, yeah, from from the the the, the uh, good brothers doing his impression of Howard yeah, Finkel. Very good, <laughs> very amazing. Good. Yes. Can you imagine if you got all services in life talk to you as Howard Finkel? Yeah, like I'm, I'm in, yeah. We're so glad you're here at the DMV. <laughs> I'm going to take care of you. My name is Howard Finkel. Howard Finkel. Yeah. <laughs> Howard was the man, too. Right. But, like, I... even uh, Baloney Bobby Heenan, like the 1990 Survivor Series, like, Roddy Piper is on that commentary team with him and Gorilla and Bobby, and it's fucking gold. Like, the Piper him, awesome. they go, you know, do the vocal fisticuffs, you know, back and forth, and it's hilarious. And I, that's Bobby Heenan is like one of the best in terms of comedy. To push the right buttons like physical comedy when he could do it was great and he kind and of and then he's also a chicken shit heel that's the best yes. part is like he, he, shit could, he could really lead a stable of just sons of bitches dude yeah, when he I, turned andre slapping him yeah, and saying i'm sorry you, right would, away. you would argue andre was bobby was just as important as andre in that whole fucking thing absolutely yeah without without him andre's heel turn wouldn't have been as uh 
would have been anything because I mean Andre could barely talk. So, um, yeah, he's he's like from peanut. out of town though, so you know. Like so, <laughs> anybody want to do that? <laughs> All right. So you you said the best voice in wrestling, um, maybe outside of the ring. I'm going to go with the best voice inside the ring. He's also the most electrifying wrestler in sports entertainment. I'm going to go with the Rock. Mr. Kennedy? <laughs> oh my God. All right. Um, Hard to argue that. Hard to argue. Just, just like the the way he went from being like pineapple head, goody two shoes. Like, oh, that's Here's Rocky Johnson's kid. Like, everybody's like, who the fuck is Rocky Johnson? You know what I mean? Like, like he, he walked Rocky in. Rocky Maivia. He walked in with uh, that huge chip and the fans just like, I'm not fucking eating this. Yeah. So he had to go back to work and figure it out. And how did he do it? By becoming a big piece of shit. Because that's what the rock be- that's what the rock was initially. And he and it just it grew from there. And he's like Austin. He 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 was himself in the ring a lot of that time. And he his delivery was great. His the way he the way he played off of everybody as well. Foley, Austin, Kurt Ang, all of them. The way he yeah. played off of Triple H, you know, Triple uh, H. Uh, yeah. I, I, the ring, uh, it's I not. It, I slept for a wipe. Uh. <laughs> it's not. It's not easy to do that. And uh, um, he made he made it work. And he was he was solid in the ring. He wasn't great in the ring, but he was very solid. And uh, a lot of us Shut probably. Up, Thank you. A lot of us wish his career probably was a little bit longer, but you're happy that he that he you know found something outside of the business, you know. Oh yeah, The Rock is number one uh, is number one pick is a fantastic pick for many, 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 many reasons. Yeah. One is that in the ring at that time and those uh, first initial that first initial run, yeah, dude, there, no one could step to him. Uh, getting out of the Rocky Maivia thing, coming into being a uh, mid Carter right as the main eventer, everything there was laid out so well. Uh, the giving the uh, nation domination their gifts, and he gets he gets Farouk and a, a poster of him is in our kind of chat. Yeah, a framed minutes. poster. Yeah, and and you go back and you watch the uh, table for three between the Godfather Mark Henry and uh, and Farouk and uh, Ron Simmons or Ron Simmons, Farouk and Ron Simmons are the same person for those watching at home. When they open their gifts from the Rock on table of three. They all get Rolexes except for Ron Simmons, who gets a signed headshot of the Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Can't go wrong with that. Like, that's yeah. kayfabe up to a million. Like, someone definitely knows where they're at. I, I and, and the best part about the Rock, though, is that as soon as he got that fame, and he started doing the transition, just like you know a lot of wrestlers do. But oh, so if you make it humble the entire way, and he and he hit Foley with the chair a little too hard. Yeah, that oh, a little bit. Christ. L- little that's bit. Really, that's a long list of that's... people who told. Foley yeah, but that, that, yeah. That, Matt, that was Royal Rumble, right? Yeah, I think it was Royal Rumble or Survivor Series. One of those two. Um, he hit him so fucking hard, like seven or eight times, where you're like, "How is this guy alive?" Or I mean, he, he, just being conscious. Period was uh, was kind of remarkable. Um, but yeah, and then he came back, and and him and Cena had a couple of couple of programs, and they. You know, sold sold some tickets, made some pay per view money, and he stepped out. Maybe he'll step back in again uh, to show uh, Roman Reigns a little something something at some point. But oh, we can only hope. I I, I don't know. Who, I mean, who's the real himself. head of the table? Who is it? Haku. <laughs> Haku. That's, yeah. and, and toughness. Yes. Obviously. Always, always the <laughs> answer is Haku. But all right, I'm gonna go with my next pick. I'm gonna actually get my tag team out of the way. Uh, I think I'm going to piss Yumper off a little bit, and I'm going to go with the Hart Foundation. Oh, yeah, that's that's a gr- that's a solid yeah. solid. Pick. Um, solid I, pick. I grew up so I when I was a kid, I I collected um action wrestling action figures, which is funny because I still do today. But um, I collected those old like the big rubber ones, you know, the LJNs. Oh yeah, and uh, that was the only those were the only one I could never find the Hart Foundation. Hart Foundation and Jake the Snake. I never was able to find my entire life. Um, I found Jake the Snake when I was in like my 30s at a flea market. I'm like, I'm gonna fucking buy this. But I still at this to this to this point, I never found um 
Brett and the Anvil. Um, and it always it always kind of like killed me that I had this huge crazy collection and I never found that one. Those but, rotten uh, bastards! <laughs> Those rotten bastards! <laughs> what He's gonna puke. Um, but yeah, Hard Foundation. They, they had it's uh, it's Yumper. <laughs> they could bring deck, huh? They could go with they could go with anybody. They did. They had really good matches with the Killer Bees. Obviously, the British Bulldogs. Um, they had a they had a program with Demolition. They had you know, just uh, just a just an amazing tag team. Rockers. That was, the, Rockers, yeah, the Rockers. That's the one I think of. They had some good matches with the Rockers, with the Brain Busters, a little bit everybody. Um, the funny thing about them is they were they were put together because they didn't know what to do with either of them. Um, mm-hmm. they were gonna put Bret Hart in this fucking. Cowboy. cowboy gimmick where he's gonna ride a horse. He was gonna be I cowboy did not Bret know Hart. What to do with Bret Hart. That's crazy. Well, it was the it was the eighties. They didn't care <laughs> the about 80s, they didn't care about ring acumen at all. I mean, yeah, they went from they went from Bruno to Backlund to Hogan. Backlund was good in the ring, but I mean, he had oh, like yeah. Yeah, he, he was, had like he six, mind. but he had like six moves and he roll roll with people. So it wasn't like it wasn't an entertaining style. But back then, it was an entertaining style because they all they were interested in was building these larger than life people. Um, but yeah, I, I, I mean, and and Anvil, Anvil could go, man. He was a big dude who can run, who can. He looked like a damn like a rhino. That uh, you know, Calgary Stampede wrestlers, man. They had a nice little the yeah. wrestlers that came out of that. Just you know, the Bulldogs, the Hearts. You had um. You know, Jake the Snake spent time up there. Everybody kind of went through that territory. Yep. And but you know, and like Bret Hart has yeah, said, even that, like Piper and Andre and all those yeah. guys worked worked up there. Yeah, even Hart has said that like come being with the found teaming up with Jim made him a lot better because he could be a heel and he could talk shit to an old lady in the front row. They kind of got him out of his shell. Yeah, and and he was comfortable because his brother in law and he and he and he you know, they it, it worked you know and mm-hmm. and the whole gimmick itself like. Like the fact that they that they just like pieced it together and put it with Jimmy Hart and called the Hart Foundation, Night yeah, Hart, Brett Hart, Jimmy Hart. I mean, it's yeah. you know, it's perfect. Funny yeah. that he married his sister and his name was Night Hart. That's kind of funny. Yeah, very very strange. Hey, Jim Night Hart, former uh, L.A. Ram. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and even you know even today, uh, Natty's been carrying the name for years now, and and yeah. it, it her her entire run has been. What you expect out of a heart in, in in a major wrestling promotion? Do you mean uh, Teddy Hart's not carrying the name? Teddy Hart. Oh my <laughs> just god! Kidding. Just kidding. So just much kidding. talent. The, the WWE just released uh, Davy Boy's kid again for like the like the fourth time. He's going back and forth though. Like, yeah, he's. I think he's working uh, major MLW now. Yeah, he was with them. I think he's with a promotion too. That um, the I, I don't know if Brett's involved with, but it's a Canadian promotion that I think his brothers my own that he's involved hmm. with they just did like a match at the calgary hitmen's uh in their middle of the um hockey stadium they just had a match there <laughs> that's a great comment uh, <laughs> good but, job but, shankster jenny but to cpg's point i mean natty in, at the end of the day is going to be like a for, first ballot hall of famer yeah, oh, yeah. Hmm. one of the best yeah. female Absolutely. wrestlers ever yeah yeah and like they fucked up her gimmick too they had her like fart all the time remember that yeah, that was a little weird. It was, so it was a little weird. I mean, we could we could do a whole draft about bad gimmicks too. <laughs> that oh man, yeah, definitely. What's up, Johnny? What's up, Johnny? All right. Um. So, I didn't set out to draft a uh, actual stable, if you will. But my first two picks on the board were Bobby Heenan, and my second one was Ric Flair. So, <laughs> I think I have to go Ric Flair, uh, <laughs> time world Ooh. champion. Um. In my head, I want to draft people not only that can go in ring but also on the mic and he is and you also wanted someone with a a helicopter penis as well helicopter penis yeah he wanted to lift it off the Um, ground by their own intuition but it i mean what can you say it's 16 time world champion limousine riding jet flying he is dealing with him dealing he is the guy he's one of the mount rushmore of wrestlers um yes. and uh i'm happy i'm happy he dropped obviously I, we talked about the 92 royal rumble to start and my draft looks like the 92 rumble but uh that was not on purpose um but, but i'm Bologna, happy it's 2023 happy. baby you can't be that old these days I, i'm happy i got my first two picks so that so that's uh you know crocodile crocodile or alligator shoes have you seen his new commercials 
Oh, yeah. Which like, ones? He's got. This like, ain't your normal ones. boner pill. Like, yeah. are, you, are you talking about Frank Thomas? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, it was eugenics. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, the, the, but one of the best things about Ric Flair is that you'll have a promo from him that was I, my favorite one. The Space Mountain is also very good. But like Space Mountain, you're gonna have Rick. You're gonna have Ric Flair surrounded by like 250 hillbillies in the middle of Georgia, and he's. Yeah gyrating and thrusting his hips in the air on top of his sports coat talking about space mountain talking about it's the long you know oldest ride of the longest line man uh especially if you watch the uh, 30 for 30 on rick flair which i recommend if you're a wrestling it's fan really and, mm-hmm. yeah, it is it is a, an insight into the business and it's also an insight into like someone being like dude the business sucks i gotta do it though and and the thirty for thirty on Ric Flair is probably one of the best watches I've ever had in that entire series. And I I watched thirty for thirty when everyone else was watching uh, the Last Dance, and they're like, "Are you watching Last Dance?" I'm like, "No, I'm watching thirty for thirty on Ric Flair." And it just watch it, just go out there, find it. It's everywhere. I'm sure at this point, go watch it. It's good. One of my favorite things to do, and I do it probably you know like once every other month, but it, it's it's fairly common. The Ric Flair Jay Lethal thing, where they're yeah. going back and forth, ooh, is ooh, so yeah. goddamn. He's throwing funny. his shoes it's, at him. Yeah, it's so funny and so good. And that's another thing where it's like we talked about, like you know, Kurt Angle having that comedy gimmick. Um, Ric Flair yeah. didn't have to be funny because he's Ric Flair, but he can do that as well. Um, and the Jay Lethal thing, I, I I love it. If you guys haven't seen it, if you're not even a wrestling fan, just just YouTube Ric Flair Jay Lethal. It's about nine minutes long. And it's the most ridiculous yet funny thing you could see. It really no, is. I, lo- I love it. Jay, I love Le- Jay, Lethal, Jay Lethal is is very talented at, at uh, mimicking. When they're just, yeah, it, he's done it twice with two different gimmicks, but he's mm-hmm. very good at it. The, the two of them together, especially during the Ric Flair stuff, is that you, like, I don't, like, there are parts of that promo where I don't, or that, or that like, you know, interaction where I don't think that Rick knew it was coming. And every single thing that he was able to throw at Jay Lethal, Jay Lethal threw it back at him on the fly. Yep. They were literally and, throwing shoes at each other. <laughs> yeah. And, and that Ric Flair was like, what the fuck do I have to do? And then, then he's just waiting in the winds the entire time. <laughs> I love it. So one of my favorite matches of all time, um, I think it's a star. Yeah, I'm, pr- I'm almost certain it's a Starcade. It's when Flair came back and he went up against Vader. And him and Vader in the ring together, you would think was going to be kind of a nightmare. Um, They made it work so well. Like, he stiffed the shit out of Flair. Like, Flair had welts and bruises and black eye. And and he's, like, screaming for his mom in the middle of the match because Vader's, like, just chopping the shit out of him. Um, and then he wins with like a simple roll up, you know. <laughs> like, yeah. But that's Rick, that's the only way he can win. Like, how is this little this little old man's gonna beat this five hundred pound, four hundred forty pound monster? Who, by the way, biggest dude I've ever seen live was Vader. Just a massive human being. Um, but yeah, so like Flair, Flair could go with anybody. Um, his matches with Steamboat obviously are legendary, but. And then Savage, um, he had some really good matches with. Even his match with Hogan, when Hogan went to WCW, that first one with like Shaq and Mr. T at ringside, that was a good, that's a good ground match. Like the Hogan, Hogan one, the Shawn Hogan Michaels prepared. one. The yeah. I'm that sorry, I love you. Yeah, even that's, when he's 55 a, years old, he was yeah, still yeah. going, you know? The, the I, I, I'm sorry, I love you is like a memorable moment and a memorable yeah. gif. People use it all the time on Twitter. I used it, I used it last week. Yeah. <laughs> like, for him, I think the Shawn Michaels one is the one that everybody goes to, but I think the uh, the Last Man Standing match with Triple H was a very good yes. one he had. Yes. That's the one still showing that he could still go. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm so... So honestly, like Flair, I understand like he, he's a great mouthpiece, but like he never thing in the ring was just never something I really liked about him because all he did was chop. And I'm like, why the hell is he it chopping? was repetitive? He do the flip over the rope all the mm-hmm. time, flip in the corner. Um, mm-hmm. the and he flop. always like low, like always Flair low flop. blow. Yeah, he'd always back. Well, and he stole that from from like Buddy uh, Rogers and yeah, Buddy, uh, other dudes. Scar- uh, yeah. Yeah. Buddy from, from of people. California. What's his name? Uh, I can't think of the top of my head, but he used to do it over the ring. Um, but yeah, just stuff like Carly that. Carly Race did it too. Uh, and 
it, it just never clicked with me but i know why he was as great as he was because he could talk uh yeah. he, he lived the, he still lives the gimmick i mean yeah but dude's burned so many damn bridges. It's well, he's a. I mean, he's a piece of shit. Yeah, so that's, um, that's why. But a lot of, these, a mean, lot of these guys are gonna be POSs. I I uh, I I got you know I got I I have a, a signed autograph picture to me by Ric Flair, which is up on the wall over there. Mm-hmm. And the moment, like the day that I got it, two I want to say two days later was the the dark side of the ring, uh, plane ride from hell episode, and everyone's like, "Do you still really like Ric Flair?" And I'm like, "Come on." <laughs> it's tough it's tough it's tough to justify a lot of your heroes and, yeah and I, he was I not about a, that all the time nice to meet in person but it's, it's in terms of performance it was good yeah yep yep um okay yump man so i'm kind of torn on who i should go i guess i can go so in terms of like my thinking here i want somebody who's gonna be like my mouthpiece be uh you know with charisma like I, it's with Austin can draw people in because I really thought about like going with that way. So for my second round pick, I'm gonna go a little you know outside the box here, and I'm gonna go RVD Ooh. because RVD actually adds that RVD. high flyer element. He could go in the ring. He's uh never really had really bad injuries in terms of uh besides when he broke his ankle, but he's pretty durable. He could talk if you need him to talk, and he could be kind of that second in command behind Steve. And he was awesome as the ECW TV champion. I know he's been world champion before, but like I've known him from ECW. Yeah, his TV stuff champion. with like Jerry, his stuff like Jerry Lynn and all. Yeah, that. Yeah, like, like those that matches. Was what I remember awesome. too. Uh, yeah. With two cold Scorpio, you know, the, just those matches. I remember, or they would just basically chain wrestle for the first ten minutes of the match, go back and forth, and then stop in the middle of the ring and pose. It was just, and he also just cracked me up because he talked so much shit too. <laughs> he was so he was so unique and original in the ring that he would botch a match like five or six times every time but nobody gave a shit because what he tried to do was fucking cool oh yeah um yeah I, I, he's he, he one of the few guys that can that can get away with that and he and he totally did I, I, definitely a guy who can get away with uh a lot in no matter what promotion he was in I mean, even in in, in his appearances and in, uh, in other companies and stuff, when when he showed up, they're like, "Oh shit, Rob Van Dam's here." Uh, with the exception of probably his last run, WWE was a little was a little much. Uh, it didn't really translate to a lot of great stuff. But man, that dude is like, if I smoke weed every day, I'm not getting out of bed. Smoke weed every day. <laughs> yeah, but that dude is like. Gets out of gets out of bed, smokes weed, eats a five star breakfast, goes to the gym, smokes weed, tackles a brisket, smokes weed, works out, smokes weed, puts on a phenomenal show. I don't know how you do it. I, I don't know what kind of strand of weed makes you be able to do that. I wish I had it because I probably wouldn't be the uh, you know the the, the three hundred pound monster I am now. But my <laughs> God, Rob Van Dam. I saw his. I saw his wife at an indie show a few a handful of years back. Brandy and I went to, and it was the worst match I've ever seen in my oh, life. No. I couldn't do anything. Like she was just there to like wear a low cut top and like like bend over the ropes a few times. Like, around. like they're trying to do like hip tosses and like like they're gonna break. I'm like, I, I was like watching. I'm like one of these broads is gonna break their necks, man. This is bad. Like, this is not K- good, Katie Forbes. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. Katie Forbes. Yep. Um. But, but yeah, even, it's like it, there's no reason this girl, this poor girl, should be in the ring at all. Like, I, I, I don't know. That's funny though. Yeah, I mean, I love that pick, Yump. I think. Yeah. Um, I so I remember. Fun pick. Um, we were in Orlando as a kid. I think it was like ninety five, ninety six, maybe ninety seven. But I was in Florida, and they had ECW late night. It was like eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock at night, and that was before they showed it in Chicago. This was probably like a year before. Um, it aired in Chicago. I didn't know what it was and I thought it was awesome. And I remember watching Rob Van Dam and Sabu and I was like, holy shit, this is completely different than anything else I have ever seen. And it wasn't until like a year later or probably longer. I went to anarchy rules at the Odeum and, and like I caught up with like all of that one. Yeah, I was there. I I was at Um, that one too. That's so, um, dude, Rob Van Dam for as much as like, Dude, ECW was a moment, and you know you could talk about Taz, Sabu, Tommy Dreamer, Rob Van Dam was that guy. Um, so it's a great pick. Yeah, 
we could we could, we could talk about yeah. we could talk about ECW for 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 hours and hours oh, and yeah. hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So good. Um okay, let's go uh let's go next one. What do you got uh CPG? You got two here. So- I'm uh, I'm uh, for the first pick. I'm going my tag team as well. I'm going with American Alpha. Ooh, uh, I see what I, you're doing here. A, a phenomenal tag team that uh, that unfortunately didn't get to shine too much too much on the main roster for main audiences because of injury. Well, and but Vince their work, too. Vince. Yeah, their work on the uh, on the on the NXT roster on their way up was phenomenal you had two guys that had not known each other 14 months before they started tagging just gel and uh being yeah. being able to really really make things come together and yes yeah they go really well with uh under the the tutelage of kurt angle as your main eventer uh as, as people that that could really really make waves um yeah, just wave the flags for me, guys. Just wave them all, ironically, but wave them. Uh, that the this all works together. Uh, American Alpha, man, they they just it was a, a talent gone too soon. Jason Jordan still a producer for WWE to this day, um, but I did I didn't take Angle's son. I took Kurt yeah. Angle's son. Kurt Angle's <laughs> that was that was a stupid that was a stupid storyline. Well, the dumbest knew, story ever. They but... knew he was never coming back in the ring too, so they you know yeah weird. poor poor guy. But yeah, you know Jason Jordan was a, a really oh. good talent gone way too soon, and it sucks to see things go that way. You know, uh, Chad Gable's had a like I I like the Alpha Academy. I I like where it's going now with the. Uh, uh, the maximum male models with OTs and all that. And, yeah, in the shoosh and all that. And and you know, you can see where the inklings of that translates, right? Because when they had uh <laughs> <laughs> Sam. Sam. When, Sam uh, when they had <laughs> yeah, Sam's got it. He's in the chambers with all this shit. Uh when when they when they had um Kurt interact with uh Chad Gable and the shoosh thing. I was I saw it. I was like, you could easily had a Kurt Angle do that twenty years ago, and it would have worked because that guy did did everything they ever throw at him. The milk. Do you guys remember him and uh, and Brock Lesnar? You know uh, when they were in their feud and they're drinking and and Brock or and, uh, Kurt's got a, a gallon of milk and they're both hitting on the same woman and uh, oh yeah, it's true, it's damn true and all that. I I don't man that that just that speaks to Kurt. But I think American Alpha in this uh, type of scenario, you can't you can't learn from anybody but the best. <laughs> Gable Gable, I feel is prob- possibly the most underrated wrestler in the business right now. Possibly, um, yeah. I I would pay a lot of money to see him and Zack Saber Jr. in the ring together. Yeah, it would be freaking insane. Or even him, even him and Danielson now. Um, Brian, I'll, I'll I'll hug you over that. I'll hug you over that. Uh, come on, bud. Yeah. Let's do it. Bring it in. But like, yeah, that's a hundred percent true. It's a guy that has really untapped pot- potential just so far in his career. I think he can get there with the right person, but yeah. Yeah. Right on. Right. Well, what, do, what do you got next? So You're going to take the iron sheet now, aren't you? No, no. After, oh. So after that, I'm, I'm going my, uh, so we got, we got our leader. We got our tag team. Uh, my mid card guy. I'm going Mr. Perfect. Ooh, that's a good pick. That was going to be my manager pick, actually. He was going to be my down. executive the same, consultant. The same thing uh, Johnny said. I thought he was going Hacksaw Jim Duggan. I thought you were just going USA straight down. No, no. I'm going <laughs> Mr. Perfect just because, again, untapped potential. And awesome. Perfect potential result. that never – probably one of the greatest wrestlers who never won the title. Best heel, mm-hmm. best, uh, best heel I've probably ever. Yeah. And, and, and he was and, actually a pretty decent face, too, for a while there in WWE. Oh, yeah. Um, and – and the and, and fantastic entrance music, uh, also in WWE, and just the like, vignettes as well. The vignettes oh, were, the vignettes the were insane. On the, on the I, football, yeah. I still think yeah the over the head the over the head basketball mm-hmm. toss and all that shit. I you know I I think that for this the the Mr. Perfect was the way to go only because. You know, one of the greatest intercontinental champions of all time. Someone who's gone way too soon, way too soon. Yeah. Definitely and. 
the untapped potential definitely could help, you know, could help American Alpha, could help Kurt Angle, God forbid. Uh, I just think it's, it's someone that definitely carried the uh, mid title scene when he had it. Cause it was the, he was the gatekeeper. That's who he was. And talk. I, yeah. And that, yeah, could do the whole nine yards. That That's why he's my mid card guy. Give, have you ever seen, um, have you ever seen any of his matches with Nick Bockwinkle in the AWA in the, in the late eighties? I have not, but I really I, good, really good stuff. He, he, he was, he was the baby face and he, and him and Bockwinkle were really good in the ring together. And let's be honest, we've all done it. The gum and the towel, we all do yes. it. Like, yes. I still do it. I do the gum. I'm coming out of the shower. I do the towel. Like, that's like, that's like iconic from Mr. Perfect. He's Perfecto. awesome. I love them. My dad used to tell me stories about, about uh, Kurt Hennig's dad, Larry the X. He was, uh, he was one of those guys who, like, ripped phone books in half. Like, just a freaking monster, monster. of a human being. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of sad that, uh, that you know, Kurt Henning's okay. kid couldn't do anything. Yeah, he, you know, and he's and he's work. He's with the he's with the WWE now as an agent, isn't but, he? Uh, uh, Curtis Axel. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think his thing was the Axel Mania. Yeah, no, he had a good he had a good run uh, during that. They tried to put him with uh, Paul Heyman for the, uh, uh, you know, just he's a Paul Heyman guy type of thing, and it, it showed that with. A Paul Heyman guy, I think, doesn't work for everybody. Yeah, uh, having his name derived from his predecessors, I think, is a great thing. But he is—he has been a backstage presence, uh, and and then when they, you know, flood the ring with stooges to break people up during fights, he was there for a lot of lows in the last couple of years. However, yeah. he had stopped, full stopped, the last couple of uh, major pay per views. Hmm. So the rumor is that either he's released, which is, you know, hey, it's a business that happens, or he is working very closely with the uh, Bray Wyatt storyline that's coming forward because hmm. Uncle Bray Howdy is, is going to have, well, I, you know, I think everyone kind of gets it at this point that uh, Bo Dallas is, is Uncle Howdy. Yeah. But, and, and Curtis Axel is going to be uh, Cousin Duty. <laughs> Or he could be Huskus. Who knows? You know, as, but as, as these characters <laughs> kind of roll forward, he might be one of those. Yeah. So maybe the end day in in ring days of Curtis Axel are over. I I think Kurt Angle and Mister Perfect on the same team is fucking scary. Those are two of my favorite heels of all time. So good job there, man. Right on, Yump. I can't believe uh, this tag team fell this far. Um, the Ding Dongs? No, no. Uh, oh. I was gonna go with uh, with El Dandy, but um, <laughs> who are you to, to to doubt El Dandy? But uh, I'm going about with the his, Outsiders. What about his partner, El Stanley Magnifico? Oh man! Or what about <laughs> so how about hypnosis? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Where did you find that? That's <laughs> I'm going with the outsiders. Um, like basically they jump started the best era of wrestling in my childhood, and that's been trying to be recreated, you know, ever since with them invading WCW. They had two main eventers from WF come over and Kevin Hall and Scott um Kevin Nash and Scott Hall. Both can talk on the mic. Both well, Scott can go more in Kevin, but Kevin played the big man very well. Yeah. They both can work in the ring. Uh they both drew money and uh, you know, through everything. Both uh Kevin eventually became a main eventer, but Scott Kai was in that secondary role. But both just awesome, you know, and everything they had like the, everything in terms of a tag team that you wanted. And I mean, there's no better per to two tag team to have when you're stable when I have Austin and Van Dam. That uh, yeah. that was I, I'm wearing the shirt. That was literally going to be my next pick. That was that was going to be my next pick, and I'm pissed you took it. It's awesome. It's, it's a good one. They, they, they changed not, the game. They changed the game. I'm not. I'm not trying to tear down the 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 pick. I'm not trying to tear down what what Young's got going here because it, it's entertaining. Is that the outsiders work though? Because it was two guys that were probably at that point like bona fide main eventers working as a tag team because they knew that's how they had to come in. Yep. 
where if you look But that's at, how the NWO worked. They were a bunch of fucking yeah. jackals. That's that's yeah, what yeah. they were. It's, it's the same so, reason why the, the yeah. main event mafia worked in, in, in TNA and all that sort of stuff too. Is that a true tag team has got to be two guys who 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 just congeal together yeah. like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And and and, and to, to to the you know a lot of that the outsiders may have been that. However, I in my opinion Take, take me back. Give me the beef loaf. You know, take, take me back. That the only reason why those guys got over as hard as they did is because as individuals, oh, man, it superseded the tag team at that point. No. I wouldn't necessarily say it did. because Ke- I think- Kevin Nash especially. I, I think Kevin yeah. Nash Kevin Nash was on top of the WWE when it was at its absolute worst. Yeah, as Diesel. Um, I, I think his run with the Outsiders and then his singles run with when, you know, when they went Wolfpack and all that shit way better than uh than anything he did in so, WWE. I totally get what you're saying, CPG, but the reason I chose them because I was gonna go with another tag team is because they're both really good friends with Austin in real yeah. life. And I think that can gel in a stable to look what kind of content. And they'll they can and make. they'll get high with Rob Van Dam. And that yeah and they love yeah. Rob. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. and I and I'm going like if you look I have like Austin who does the badass you know in between go between you have Rob Van Dam who's just laid back and then you have the outsiders as your muscle. So and then you of, also have you also have Rob Van Dam getting stone cold high, and maybe he won't. Maybe that'll that'll help mend his back and his neck and his knees. And... <laughs> but I totally get what you're saying. But I think there, when I think of the outsiders, besides I, I don't think of Kevin Nash as Diesel. I think of Kevin Nash as Kevin Nash. Scott Hall can go as Razor because Razor was so popular with WWF in the, the early '90s to mid '90s. But when you think of like big time. They really hit it big with the outsiders. That's where they made their most money. That's where yeah. you know too sweet is still used today. I, the I would was say powered off that as well. I would say Hall's run in the WWE was better than his run in WCW, but Kevin mm-hmm. Nash is the other way around. So yeah, it's, it, so is, yeah. it is kind yeah, of split. But, yeah, okay, one yeah. hundred percent. They were a hell of a tag team though. When I think of Scott Hall, I think of the ladder match with Shawn Michaels as Razor Ramon. When I think of Kevin Nash, I think of the Outsiders and the NWO and things like that. yeah. Um, yeah, his run, his run as champion is Diesel. The main reason it didn't work as well as it did is the opponents they put him up against. Um, like they 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 had a whole program with him and fucking Mabel. I mean, oh yeah, Mabel. You know, yeah. it, it it didn't work. Hey, you know, they, they no, didn't build hurt. him up. They, they didn't they build him up as him. a superstar. They, they put him in the him spot, so quick. and they put him in the spot to lose to Bret Hart. Ultimately, they just needed to get the the belt off of Backlund. And, I and think that's his, exactly what they yeah, did. His um, two best matches were against Hart and against uh, the Undertaker. Those that, that was a, like the two biggest ones he had. Like yeah. his like his. He had a couple really good ones with Bulldog too. Him and Bulldog worked really mm-hmm. well together. Uh, this comment real quick about be, uh, being the Russian from the Punisher. He was also uh, Super Shredder. Kevin Nash was Super Shredder in uh, Secret of, uh, of the Ooze uh, Ninja Turtles movie. Did you uh, did you see why they had him uh, do it and how they got him to do it? No. He was at so the original guy to be Super Shredder was um, the guy from Predator, uh, the guy who played the Predator, and yeah. he was sick. He got, you know he passed away, so they couldn't do it. And they went the actually the Ninja Turtles team went to a wrestling event. I think he was in WCW at the time, and they were calling him over when he was Vinny, walking Vinny out. Ve- Vinny Vegas yeah. as Shredder, yeah. And they called him out. They're like, "Hey, do you want to do this?" And he's like, "Uh, yeah." So he said he went to the hotel room and was there for like five hours as they made a mold of his face. Just to get to be in that movie, um, but yeah, he's also the Russian in John Wick as well, and that is true. He almost killed. He almost killed the Undertaker too. He was yeah, sneaky, he was the most, <laughs> the most unsafe wrestler ever. Big Daddy V. Yeah, Big Daddy V. Um, all right. Well, let's go. We're about we're halfway home here. Uh, Baloney, who you got next, bud? I'm going. Um, I'm going tag team, and I feel like it's someone that can wrestle with anyone. You could tell me whatever style of match obviously they were more famous for their hardcore matches bushwhackers right it's the dudley boys i think whenever i think of of tag team wrestling and like the big like you know like main event matches and well we could talk about edge and christian and i don't want to give up give i'm giving away picks and stuff like that but um Uh... yeah it's the dudley boys i i i I love the run both in ecw and in the wwe I, I'm envisioning I, them I, I going. Don't like, I don't like them um, 
personally and i think i th- yeah. that might be like yeah. all of my bubba, bubba ray's a dick yeah, yeah for sure my whole Absolutely. run of wrestlers it, it's mostly like uh, a lot of my like sports heroes as well they're yeah. just sons of bitches but uh, i can't deny what they did in the well, ring and looking at like i could have picked a, a, a couple different tag teams but looking at heenan flair the dudley boys they all fit like a mold of sons of bitches if you will <laughs> Especially yeah. if you use the ECW Dudley Boys. I mean, yeah. when they came into WWF, they were you they were uh, using like Bubble Ray had a fucking stutter, which is stupid because and well, ECW, he had that in ECW. That was yeah, yeah. But his ECW promos were so much better. Like they were. Well, he like, worked with the crowd well. So the problem is the crowd didn't interact as well in the WWE. They ECW those guys those guys were were fucking screaming and swearing at each other. But the WWE, you really couldn't interact with the crowd the capacity that they that they were able to in ECW. Yeah, so the uh, one of the reasons I picked them is because I, I, it's obvious by now it's it's they work better as a heel. Um, yeah, but uh, I, I well, really I, like. I'm envisioning like right now. I'm envisioning like so you, the music hits and the stable comes to the ring and and the Dudley Boys are like in suits with Ric Flair. Oh yeah, <laughs> suits yeah, and Rolexes. Yeah. And... Oh yeah, and just have the media <laughs> guy like kind of, kind of like when you know when Triple H went Evolution. No one ever thought yeah. that was going to happen until yep. you know Rolex turn him into a Rolex wearing suit wearing. I think that like the Dudleys uh, showing up being straight laced like that. Man, what a moment that would have been! That'd piss the crowd off. Yeah. That'd be a good. That'd be a good heel yeah. moment, like sellouts, if you will. <laughs> you yeah, get the awesome. suits, but just keep the glasses. <laughs> yes, that would work. Hey, you know what? I should. I think I got some tape on here. I have to take my glasses off. <laughs> All right, I got two here. Well, I'm gonna go with my. So just just so that the people who are listening and watching, uh, I I did not prepare for this at all. I, uh, um, I've I've been such a wrestling nerd and kind of wrestling. You know, it's like like we've already we're not we're what halfway through right now. We're at an hour, and we could probably go for like three or four more hours talking about I wrestling. Th- I thought about um, that when we were talking in the second round. We could go you know, four hour. We, it could be a right, four hour show, right? So I mean, like that's why I didn't prepare. I'm gonna go with my next one. I'm gonna go with my manager. Um, he played a really good manager. He was also a very good singles wrestler. Um, was a tag team champion as well in WWE. Um, ev- you know, everybody's got a price for him, and he's the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase. But he's gonna be my manager in this group. I like that. I like that a and lot. There's there's a reason behind it, and I'll explain it later. But um, but yeah, the mouthpiece, he was he was phenomenal. Another guy though, like total, total, total jag off, but um manages the Steiners too. Yeah, he managed the Steiners. He he was he was basically a manager for the NWO as well. Um, and then he had that run where where he just kept bringing people in to, to, to get the Undertaker. You know, he even brought he even brought the fake Undertaker. So King Kong Bundy. Um, yeah, Bundy, uh, Kama. Um, yeah, I mean he had I mean Miss, I think Mr. Hughes was part Mr. of that Hughes, for, yeah. at one point. <laughs> Mr. Hughes was always yeah. the most ridiculous wrestler ever because he never took his sunglasses off. He wrestled <laughs> with his fucking sunglasses on I think, all the time. Oh man. I think uh uh one of the esteemed members of the uh the, the, the chat we're all in was like if you guys are doing a draft and there's managers, how are you not taking Virgil number one overall? And I was like, we're not doing that. I don't think anyone's <laughs> picking Virgil. I'm confident. I'm not. I'm not picking Virgil. Well, did, but did you pay fifty dollars to get an autograph from wrestling no. wrestling legend Virgil? But, like I had to explain downtown, to, downtown Jones. I explained to to Roxy today who Virgil was, and it, it got to the point where it's like this guy thought that he was the focal point of a lot of stuff. And then when he didn't get inducted in the Hall of Fame on the year that he thought he would, he got on Twitter, went live, and his balls were hanging out of his shorts. <laughs> <laughs> that really happened. <laughs> so, so Sam, the funny part about your comment here is he's like a six foot seven inch black dude wearing like a, he wore like a like a like a dress shirt and suspenders and like dress pants, and he wrestled with sunglasses on. <laughs> it was bizarre. But okay, so my next pick, I'm gonna go ahead and get my 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 second man in charge uh, out of the way. Um, he is quite possibly my favorite wrestler of all time. Um, he uh, is the cream of the crop. 
He is the Johnny? Macho Man, Randy Ooh. Savage. Ooh, that's yeah. a good one. Freak oh, out, yeah! freak out, freak out. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to snap into the Slim Jim and take Macho Man. Nothing means nothing. The cream rises to the top. The amount of cocaine. All of oh it. Oh, my God. All of my, like My favorite Macho Man is Macho King when it was him and Sational Sherry, and they're going up against uh, Dusty and Sapphire. Those promos where the, Just, the two of them are high as fucking kites. <laughs> How did they let Sapphire wrestle? She was like a 50-pound overweight woman with absolutely no training. She's diabetic, so, too. With oh, it was, it was all Dusty, I'm sure. I mean, it, it, and it fit Dusty's character so Sapphire, well. Sapphire, you get in the ring, baby. Sam, yeah. we, me and my brother say that to each other all the time when we mess around. Bone saw's ready. Bone yeah. saw's ready. Bring me some yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, every time, every time Rox is like, uh, you know, hey, after after you know dinner, if everything goes well, you know, do you want to come back for a little bit? Like, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! And then immediately, I'm I'm thrusted into an Uber and I'm sent home. But <laughs> one day it'll get there. Macho Man is like my mom's favorite wrestler. Like. No shit. When we used to watch it, he's gone. She will. She's just because of the way he talked. That's why she's like, "Oh, the Macho Man." He could go with anybody. Um, this promos, especially stuff that he did with Gene by himself, mm-hmm. even when he didn't have Liz with him. Like he was, man, that guy could. Dude, that guy could talk. Him and Liz getting back together. That was a fucking moment. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was. Uh, I remember that as a kid, like. Oh, him and Flair, no. but hit that oh, yeah. program with him and Flair with the the photoshopped at, at that point. Yeah, things yes. that people thought because it it wasn't photoshopped pictures. It was literally they took two shots because the, the technology didn't exist. You know, I you know, and then you got Rick on the other side of that. You know, like you know, you have her now, and I had her first, and then you, you then you have like fucking ah oh, man. That that entire oh God, I love Macho Man and that entire. Well, he had when he when he retired and then came form. back, when he retired and came back, the promo or the the program that he had with Jake Roberts with the fucking Cobra. Trust me. And that, did you ever hear the story, Jake the Snake? Tell the story about the Cobra. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, you gotta take the bite. Yeah, first. you get the yeah, bite he, first. He, yes. Yeah, he didn't ma- Macho Man. So the people that, that don't know the story, Macho Man and Jake the Snake, we're gonna we're gonna have a, a an angle where, um, Jake the Snake's snake which was a cobra was gonna bite savage in the ring and just it it ended up freaking everybody out but before it happened <laughs> macho man didn't trust jake the snake so we made jake the snake take the fucking ba- the snake out of the bag and had the snake bite him in the leg just to make sure that there was no venom in the snake <laughs> what a crazy bastard um he also was like horribly meticulous when sched- when like planning a match out like an absolute lunatic, like every single component of the match was mapped out um, piece by piece. So he's like, he's just like a, like a OCD crazy person. All right. So question for you, Brian, because yeah. I saw like CPG's mid card or, you know, yeah. Mid card wrestler was perfect. Obviously have never won the world title. Macho yeah. man had a hell of a run as the main guy. Uh, so yeah. what are we defining as like our second guy? This is... Can it be anybody? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so cool. I think Macho Man can go on in that second spot because if you want to look at his WCW run, he was second to Hogan in the stable. Yeah. Um, and he was second to Hogan in WWF. He had his run, Me- but he was Mega always Powers. He also, yeah. he also tagged with the Warrior and, and he was kind of the secondary guy. Yeah. Jesus. When, war- when Warrior wore the suspenders, basically. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm just I'm just asking because I I'm game planning. Yeah. Ahead oh, of that's time. fine. I'm gonna I'm gonna take my female wrestler, and okay. people are gonna call it nepotism, and people are gonna hate it. But for it's my wife, stable, my my stable, oh. I like how it's turning out. It's uh, Charlotte Charlotte Flair. Ah, um, I was gonna take her. I think um, when you look at like uh, you know the four horsewomen, if you will, or or you know the four women coming out of NXT that were the pillars of of WWF wrestling for a while, whether you like it or not, Flair has had, has had a hell of a career. And if you look at the stable, it makes sense for me to pick her as I feel like she's the best heel of those four. I feel the look and her in ring 
acumen is unmatched, I think, ever. Um, so that alone, yes. Um, I don't like the way they've booked her over the years. Yeah, but and I don't irrelevant. think that's much She's... of her fault as much as WWE. No. Um, yeah, you're right there. But um, but yeah, she I, always should have. She should have had. She should have had a mouthpiece for sure. That yeah. always should have had some yeah. type of manager, but she never so did. We talked about it. So Julie was in the wrestling early, early ish. It was back when like, and I don't want. I, I don't want to give picks, but someone had a steampunk gimmick, and and she really liked that steampunk gimmick. Um, Brandy did too. Yeah, and so. Um, we talked about them, you know, obviously being friends and then obviously enemies. No, not being friends. Yeah. yeah, not being friends at all. Um, but at the time I was like, Flair would make sense to have a Bobby Heenan or a Ted DiBiase or someone that's currently in WWE that we haven't picked yet, but a mouthpiece would have been awesome for her. I think with, with Charlotte Flair is that you the the lineage is there. She can obviously do the do the job. She's a phenomenal wrestler in ring. Yep. Uh the problem is is that they man did they fast track her to try to get to those 16 world championships. Yeah. And that's where the problem is, is that you should have broken those up over over a 20 year career, not a what did she in set six, seven year career? And she's she's knocking on the door. It's 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 a lot. And you can you know when you see interviews with her, especially the table for three, uh where she's there, where like they bring up Reed and they bring up what it's like to be a flair, and you can see where it is absolutely taxing on you as a performer to to be that. And I, you know, I, I'm not the biggest fan of her uh, when she holds a championship that I don't think she should have had. But when you get her in a ring, especially with Bailey, with Sasha Banks or um, Mercedes Monet for those watching at home, or the uh, or or uh, Becky Lynch, man, the fluidity those four had. You're putting on a you're putting on a four star match in a high school gymnasium if you want to put it there. You know, it's it's the talent is there. It's just it's it's this unsurmountable, uh, you know, like mountain you have to climb for her. Yeah, yeah. It's it's it, w- it wasn't easy for her to to step in and and take over that role. But the reason she had all those all those runs with the belt is because the volume of, of their roster isn't very heavy in terms of yeah. women, oh, you know, yeah. instead, it had 60, 70 men on the roster and 12 women, you know what I mean? Like, and she's like old reliable, you know, like when something doesn't work, they could just go back to Charlotte flair for six months or four right. months or whatever. Right. And kind she's of, the tra- she's the transition while they build someone else. Yeah. Yeah. I still think Oscar should have beat her at WrestleMania. That's just my opinion. Absolutely should have. Yes. But I also, um, I also thought Rhea Ripley should have beaten her the first time. Yes. Yeah. But I think yes, uh for sure. Yeah. I think just having a flair name kind of hurts her in terms of because I think yeah. she's she, I think her ring and ring ethic, you know, her work rate is nice, is good. Unbelievable. I, think, I don't think she's great on the mic, and that's something that oh, no. is just bad because it's she's Rick Flair's kid. So that's one strike against her. I do think and like I know he was talking about the 16 championship. I think like the issue with wrestling, at least when I was watching it, and even with Triple H, Triple H became like a 14 time champion. Like they were giving people fucking title runs just to give them title runs, mm-hmm. and that the you know the belts kind of lost their I meaning. Now, as you see, as they're going through with more of a, a longer run with Roman, the belts are starting to mean something again, and that's something that they need to keep stay stay at because just flipping the belt over and over, like that 16 time world champion, just doesn't mean shit anymore. Yeah, like that was a yeah. big thing about Flair. Like when in the WCW, they called him out. You know, the 16-time world champ. That was like big thing. You know, you heard that. Even though Jerry Lawler won his fucking his title like 55 times, and <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I'm saying like good old USWA baby. I think that hurts her in terms of that. But, I, but that's a great pick to have somebody that could, could go in the ring. You have the whole Flair thing going with her, and I found that hilarious that you said the steampunk gimmick because that was my next pick. Well, yeah, I wasn't. I think CPG okay. talked about it. I, I wasn't sure how we talk about picks that we haven't picked. Like, you know, like, I don't want to tip picks. So that's why I was saying steampunk. Well, I had like two. That, but and you, but you it's you hard two. to not talk about rivals and things like that without giving away picks. Yeah. 
And uh, I'm just going to go with my pick with Becky Lynch, but I'm yep. going with the man gimmick because I think the man, the way she dressed, will fit perfectly in my stable with the Outsiders, Van Dam and Austin. Yeah. She could talk. She could go in the ring. She can draw money. She still draws money. Um, you know, she really evolved from... She was kind of... If you look at that WrestleMania when they had her, Sasha Banks, and Charlotte Flair, she was kind of like the odd person out because you had Sasha Banks coming up, yeah. Charlotte Flair, of course, being Charlotte Flair, and she was like the little the low man. Now she's fucking on top. I remember when they were doing like the press tour for that match. Um, they had the the bar. They had Rob, uh, the women wrestling Barbie dolls that they were just coming out with. Yeah, and they had like a promo, like a picture of her standing there with Charlotte and Sasha, and they have their dolls, but Becky doesn't have a doll. Yeah, <laughs> like just like okay, <laughs> like, it's a big deal. This is a main. This is like a main. They they main evented right. Yeah, they main evented. Yeah the fucking main event you're not gonna build that up all three of them like that's fucking asinine and i love the fact she made something out of a yes sam she's still wrestling you know and the best part is she fought with rick flair over the man moniker Mm -hmm. uh but yeah i mean she could go she could talk on the mic you know i I just love the way she evolved as a as a wrestler and that's all about wrestling like how you know change yourself into something different and like all our wrestlers that we've chosen have done that besides flair i mean flair's flair but everybody's kind of like transitioned to something different. Flair's like that old guy. You're like, oh, okay, Grandpa, I'll drive you home. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See, Sam. Sam does know wrestling. He knows who he knows who Becky Lynch is. Wrestling, 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 I'm in the wrestling business. All right, uh, CPG, your last two picks, pal. Yeah, my last two picks. I'm also going to take my uh, my female superstar. I'm taking Jordan Grace. I don't know if you guys have seen uh, Impact Superstar, Jordan Grace. I don't know if you guys have seen her uh, body transformation over the last four yep. months. Yes. We, As she gets talk- ready. Yeah, to get ready for that uh, that bodybuilder competition she's doing. But, oh, my God, does she fit the absolute epitome of, like, being at your absolute physical limit as a human being, what you can do. That When she went from her uh, – you know, her image and, 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 uh, you know, and she was build. already like, she was already like, like, like a built, like a, she like was a, a power, like a body. She, yeah. She was yeah, a bodybuilding, but now she's like a, like a crazy power, like not even a power lifter. She's like a crazy, like bodybuilding. Yeah. And then she just um, shredded it off and she is just, it, it's, it's an entirely different person. You know, I, I, Gresham and her, their workout has to be insane. The two of them. Because you can see it well, in both their yeah, positions. Yeah, I mean, he's you, just cut like crazy too. And she and she's get and she's there. I mean, they're yeah. working together on that. There's no way. I mean, they're married. They're married. But like, I'm you, pretty you sure she. I'm pretty sure her body is crazier now than than his. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. he. Yeah. It, it. I. When I was thinking of female technical wrestlers, I was like, I didn't look at her initially because I all I thought about was when she was with uh, Scott Steiner and TNA. And I was like, no. And then, and then when I watched her last couple of matches, and when she went to uh, back up Mickey James uh, recently in Impact, and I ac- accidentally spear her and stuff, I was like, I think this woman fits with my stable. I think this is, you know, because she is just an absolute powerhouse. She she kept all the strength, all of the uh, being able to manhandle people with with the 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 weight to throw them around like she had before. But man, is that woman shredded the gills? Yeah, yeah, I she's. Could, uh, I could just hear CPG doing the uh, the Vince McMahon, the vascularity. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, the vascularity. You know. Those rotten bastards. Yeah. <laughs> look, look, look at the biceps. Look at the girth. You know, it, it, that's 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 Vince McMahon. I mean, I Son of a when bitch. when she showed up like that, I was like, "This is the same person I've been watching for years." Yeah, she, I mean, years, she made that transformation. She made that transformation in like four months. Like, what yeah, the like, hell? Like, yeah, and then for TNA, what, that's like, overnight. What kind of, yeah, what kind of what kind of what kind of horse steroids is she taking? Gresham. <laughs> I, All right, that, that's who it is. Uh, and then also for my fifth and and final for this round uh, for the managers. This was hard, boys. It really was because my first in, initial pick, I was like, I got it. You know, it, it, it's uh, uh, someone who could definitely help a stable like this. However, his ethics didn't 
align with everybody else. And that's the one of the things that was, that was so hard, but I think in, in both uh, this stable being a good and a bad, someone who can absolutely kill it, ham it, uh, kill it when, kill it when they're good and ham it when they're bad. The manager's got to be Paul Heyman. Yeah, I, I I thought for sure he was going to get drafted earlier, to tell you the truth. But yes, you wouldn't have be. taken him. I was going to take him. It has to be my my first initial my first initial manager for this group, and it was and and uh, rocks will dodge for me if you guys ask her. Was that I I was going to say William Regal, and, and not to give away future picks for anybody, but I'm I'm saying William Regal was my manager until I realized that, like damn, as a manager, all he does is do underhanded tactics, and everybody in the list that I've picked. In a fluid in a, in a fluid stable, would never do that. Squeaky fucking clean. And if they're bad guys, they kill you. Squeaky clean. You got a you not. got a name for your stable? I I was gonna go with uh, so I had I had uh, American dominance was what I went with, but I don't like that because the state of the world today. Um, I think just. Submission. Well, that would be a great that would be a great gimmick considering it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think submission machines, man. Everybody there can kill you. You know, I, I submission machines works well. I I've been back and forth on a lot. I don't have a, a definitive answer as of right now, but this entire stable is just they will outlast it. that. You know, call it that. Call it outlast because they will outlast you in the ring. They will. I'll last you on the mic. They will last you in the parking lot if you try to attack. You know, they are. That is, they outlast everybody. They have the the uh, intestinal fortitude to, to, to take out the competition. There, there is not a more purebred, pure everything. Just people who shred themselves. To get, but Paul Heyman, we know. We know he's an exception to this rule. To take out the competition – but a guy like Paul Heyman, bunch of Paul perfect Heyman. specimens, and then like porky ass Paul Heyman. Exactly, well, because just just like we've seen on WWE television lately, you know, Paul Heyman got had a had a, a full neck brace, but the entire promo he's doing this. <laughs> you know, that's what I wanted out of him. I think that I can get that out of him. That's why he's my pick for a manager. Right on. All right, Yumper, let's go with your. Uh... Oh man! So, I had Polly dangerously as my pick before CPG took him, yep. but I was actually going to take somebody uh, um, funny just to be funny. I was going to go with Joe Ger- Gerdner. You guys know who he is? Oh, uh, he, Joe Gerdner was when I was a kid. I probably shouldn't have been reciting Joe Gertner lines, but we were all <laughs> reciting Joe Gertner lines. Yeah, but uh, he was hilarious. But. I'm going to go old school on this one. And I think he fits perfectly with what I'm trying to go here. And I'm going Gary Hart. Nice. Not a lot man of people are going to, are going to know Gary Hart. Um, uh, from Chicago, always the man who, who who walked around with a blade was legit badass in real life. Yep. Um, you know, managed some crazy motherfuckers yes. too. Ab- Abdullah, the butcher, oh, great, yeah. mu- sure. great Muda, um, Gino Hernandez, uh, who ultimately, you know, was murdered. Um, mm-hmm. Cocaine's a hell of a drug. Uh, totally. Yeah, he was. He was good, man. He, uh, he uh, very underrated. He he was he was in like he, like his his pinnacle was Japan and world class. Yep. Like and awesome mouthpiece. Serious. He always wore the suit. And eventually, uh, you know, he started when he went bald. He had the white suit on. This like his look is fucking phenomenal. Yeah, and he, like I he said, he carried away on a that. few years ago, I believe. I think it was like he had like almost 10, 15 years ago. Oh, really? Okay. I yeah, thought it was a hate gone for a while. Okay. okay. But just, you know, you might not know him, but look up his stuff. Like he had a, a great book that came out too that it's kind of hard to get. Oh, now, yeah. But... And he was the he was the booker for world class as well. Mm-hmm. Like he had a lot to do. If you ever if you ever want to watch a really good um documentary, there's there's like a death of the world class. Can't remember. The WWE did a good one, but there's also an independent one that's really good, and they interview they interview Gary Hart a lot in it. Indie indie uh, docs about WCW are always going to be a little bit better than WWE produced ones because they're 
and uh, you know their their bias is one. Like if you look at like the the hit piece they did on Ultimate Warrior, you know, down the line, it, it's they definitely make themselves look a lot better than they actually were. Because like a lot of it, to this day, a lot of people don't know that during those Monday Night Wars and in, in WCW, you know, obviously coming from you know world class wrestling and all that, it almost wasn't a thing. Like it, two more weeks and WWF was gone. Yeah, and, and a lot of people don't know how that's how close it got between those. But yeah, anything on W WCCW uh, WCW a, a, is a rich history there, a rich history of really great competitors, really great talent, and who have shown up all over your TV screens in years. Yep. Yeah. WC. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Austin started in world class too. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Right on. That's a good one. I like that. I liked that a lot. Yumper. Good job. Um, you got a name? No, I got. I have a, a name. I'll I'll say it after. Okay. He goes. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, you can veto if you want. I'm still <laughs> struggling on what you want the secondary. You know. You know, like mid card guy to be. Who's gonna hold Ric Flair's jacket? It's gonna be. Is it gonna be Hogan? That's fine. No. It, <laughs> I I need guys that. Can I, he said it noise. already, though. He I'm said it. Do it. It's it. I I'd be stupid not. You guys know. It. I have to go punk if you guys let me do punk. I want to. I want to be able, you know, bitch. for my guys to talk on the mic, and I always thought Punk was better as a heel. All my guys are better as heels, um, and he's a big reason why I got back into wrestling. Um, it could be a homer pick if you want, but uh, but yeah, I think he, what he did for the industry at the time where I started watching back wrestling, and then even his stupid ass run in AEW, which people hated, but I thought. Um, you know, when he came back at, at the United Center, that pop was unreal. And um, the pipe bomb and everything else. I, I just want people that not only can go in the ring, but can hold their own promo wise. That was basically my strategy. So hey, um, it's punk. Hey, I think you I think you knocked it out of the park with that, though, because you already have Bobby Heenan. And when you have when you have like like. You know, watching Punk and Heyman together, they didn't. Neither one of them needed each other, but when they were together, oh my god! So the, you have a, a really good uh, uh, <laughs> Sam. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, you you have this matchup of two people who could really do a lot. Um, Sam Punk, I you know, the the run in AEW was what it was. Uh, I'm pretty sure that it's done after this this uh, weekend. Uh, done definitively closed the book on it. He's done with wrestling again. But uh, man, uh, on on the mic and be able to be in a, be in the uh, the second potato to Ric Flair. That's a good pick, man. That's a like, and that and that's and then ultimately and then ultimately he'll he'll take over the, the group. Over. You know, the, yeah. the thing oh, I yeah. thought about realistically, and it's because of Flair, and I'm looking at it right now. It could be another version of Evolution. You know. We're or we're, we're punk. I just I, I just keep I just keep thinking like the Dudley boys in suits. Like, That's the thing. That the yeah, one, the yeah, one thing but I love, but I love, that. I love it. I love it. So I wasn't sure about the tag team and how it could fit in with my, you know, what I was trying to do. Right. Um, but realistically, it's it was probably going to be the dusty the Dudley boys regardless. So, yeah. Cool. Um, I don't know the the name. The Baloney Club, I, I got, man. I mean, Baloney Club does make sense. I think that's taken already. Uh, it's got to be something like the voices, or or just like, uh, yeah, I'll go with that. I don't something like that. Baloney Club would be good, but no, let's go uh, the voices. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I don't know if you guys have noticed my picks, but there's all a theme there. Do you guys know what the theme is? The the. The, the. <laughs> the Rock is a third generation superstar. Ah. Bret Hart is a second generation superstar. Ted DiBiase is a second generation superstar. The Macho Man, Randy Savage, is a second generation superstar. So my final pick, I gotta go. I was gonna take Charlotte Flair, obviously. Um, she'd have been perfect to round it out, but I'm gonna go off the go off the grid a little bit. So I feel like women's wrestling is right now that this generation is probably the peak of, and I'm not saying it's gonna drop. I'm just saying this this right now we see better better talent, better matches, better everything in women's wrestling. It's just not booked very properly on either in, in any of the businesses, in my opinion. But um, 
but I'm going to go with someone who kind of started it off. I think she was one of the transitions from uh, Diva to what we see today. Um, she's still in the ring. I haven't liked what I've seen from her since she's come back, but I'm going to go with Paige, another second generation superstar. Okay. Um, she, she was just putting together bangers until she got hurt, man. Yeah. And I, I, I use the term bangers, you know, well, well, you know, yeah, yes. um, yeah. but yeah. And then, and then we're, uh, we're, we're called, uh, bound by blood. That nice. Makes sense. I love it. That's good. That's really good. Like a, uh, like man, a, uh, it's like an, it's like an eighties movie about a gang in prison. No, that's that's blood and blood out. Excuse me. <laughs> her <laughs> her run when she Bye-bye came out, her. the the AJ the AJ Lee stuff that was really really good. And like you and said, AJ AJ Lee's another one that should get a lot of credit for I being really, one of those one of I those really people thought, that transitioned because oh, yeah. she was fucking great in the ring too. I really I would even give that. I would even give the Bellas a little a little credit for that because they they could both go as well. Um, but they moved from like pulling hair and just shaking them into the into the mat to actually being trained and good. And you got to give Triple H, you got to give Dusty Rhodes, you got to give a lot of credit to those guys to uh, um, help create that that next this generation that's that's been so good. It was definitely Paige and AJ Lee in my book that what you said was yeah. transition from the divas to the the women's revolution if you will that that they call it um they they held their own for a long time and uh yeah I, like you said i don't know not not too great uh in aw so far but her run in in wwe uh, before it, it you know obviously injuries took their took their toll i don't think i've ever bit. seen I don't think I've ever seen a promo just absolutely destroy someone's career as bad as I I think it has. I don't, you know, I know you don't, you don't watch as much, but you should really check out the, the like second promo that Paige did when she came back. It's a clusterfuck of terrible. It's bad. And it's, and it's, it's it's AEW's fault. They didn't fucking prepare her. Um, you know, but, uh, she, she has that history too. Cause didn't she do, uh, didn't she do the shit with Charlotte when she was trying to be like, kind of like on the edge and like break kayfabe didn't she do thing with charlotte flair when she mentioned reed no they they it was Paige, uh charlotte and becky was a tag team that she brought up with her when she came back i think the yeah but then she said something that, about reed though like that pissed a lot of people off was she was doing a i don't remember against... that oh, yeah, i can't I remember, remember i can't remember if that was part of it when they split from her but i, I remember them being close for that reason mm-hmm. but and with with, with Paige's general, like, especially in AEW, they fumbled that from from the get go. And the problem, like the thing that I never liked about Paige uh, on the main roster for WWE, like your debut and you win the championship, that's great. However, your entire uh, gimmick, your personality, uh, what ran you as as a, as a you know as a character and as a wrestler was. That you were an anti diva, you weren't the status quo. You did, you know, you, you dressed in bondage gear, or you had everything was black, nothing was bright colors, and then you debut and you win the what divas championship, and then after that, she adopted so much from AJ, the skipping to the ring, the more like colorful gear. It took away from what they established in NXT, and then. As you know, things happen, unfortunately, for her, and and then you know, getting to the point where she's at AEW now, the things that she's doing in AEW right now are things that she complained about hurting her mental health in WWE when she was getting sprayed with spray tan by the Bellas. And she's doing yeah, yeah. you, know, you mentioned I think you like mentioned that. that on the on the playback. The playback yeah, we were yeah. we were talking about that. Yeah, yeah, and and, and mm-hmm. getting spray painted with an L by the by the Bella twins and and uh and Eva Marie, and she's doing the same thing in AEW. And I, I, I just, you know, maybe she learns a, a little bit from uh, Ronnie Radke a little bit, which sucks. Don't learn anything from him if kids are watching at home. But you know, it, it's, it is what it is. A good, a good pick for what you're building, Brian. I, I, I admire the shit out of that after seeing it all come together, Bound by Blood. I just Paige has got. You know, she Soraya Page. We've got to figure out some middle ground, and I don't think she knows how to do that. Yeah. Question. Um, yep. And I, I don't want to like nitpick picks, but looking at what you said about being second generation wrestlers and 
you have yeah. the heart foundation there. Would you not want to have Natty as opposed to Paige? Thought about it. I like Paige better. Um, like I mean, we already I talked about Natty. Hall- I don't have any problems with Natty, but I, they're I think both Paige- like Hall of Famers. They're not. They're, I yeah. mean, they're they're. I think I think Paige's peak was better. So they're very important. Yeah, for sure. They're very yeah. important at, at their points of career and stuff. But I was just mm-hmm. looking out like, oh yeah, that makes sense too. It, it's identity at that point, right? Because like yeah. Paige forged her own identity independent of her parents. Because to to most most you know U.S. watching, no one knows who they are. And even if you are a U.K. watching, outside yeah, her of, her parents' promotion, promotion was small. Yeah, yeah, no one knows like, who they are. Yeah. Natty's entire personality and entire gimmick and entire push is based on being a heart. Yep. Yeah. yeah I, I bet some people will watch or listen and go, Ted DiBiase wasn't a second generation. Or Randy Savage wasn't a second yeah, generation. Mike, yeah. Mike uh, DiBiase. And, yeah, he uh, died, in the, died in the ring. Yeah. Um, yeah. He had a heart attack and died in the ring. The miser Shit. was a uh, macho man's dad. Yeah. No, I think, I mean, if you're a wrestling fan, you know, Savage was the second generation. Good, so. good old Angelo Pafo. Yeah. He was a mean looking dude. Yeah. Um so anybody anybody that didn't get picked that you are kind um, of surprised? Absolutely. Well, there's uh, a, so, I, a million, a million people. I'll I, say I'll say the one thing that I, I kind of arg like argued with myself, I fought over uh instead of the Heart Foundation, I, I was gonna take Los Guerreros. Ooh. I was Eddie. thinking about taking Eddie as yeah. one of yeah. my picks too. Um it, I, it, it, I'm surprised LOD wasn't taken. Yeah, I that was my other plan was to do like a muscle bound '80s freak group. It was gonna be like Warrior, <laughs> be like Warrior Hogan. You know, I was gonna be like Paul, I was gonna be like Paul Ellering as the manager. Oh, I love Paul Ellering. That would have been awesome. Uh, uh, Ellering Brian, was a great. Ellering was great. Yeah. Uh, for my stable name, I want it to be Broken Principles. <laughs> nice. So, so I without the uh, without going to. If, if, if you want to, and you can if you want, or you just want to know who we didn't think make it, I think that each group, if you want to do a sixth round, you can cement both these, all these groups. But uh, unless you don't want to do that. Sixth round, what would you pick? Is there just anything? Anything. A- any any person, any tag team, any whatever. You guys want to do that? Um, I mean, I don't care. Like, it's I, I don't care thing. either. I feel like it's going to... Well, no, yeah. Can... We could do whatever whatever you want. Yeah. I would um... say go with singles, though, because I think, like, tag team is, like, kind of doing... Can it get into, like, where the NWO just had everybody? Oh, no, it's got to be a wild round. Because every yeah. whenever a stable deviates from this, it's always wild. Mm-hmm. Whether it's another tag team, whether it's another single superstar, whether it's a big guy, whether it's a, you know, however it is. And... Because getting like having to sit down and pick from these categories, I got stumped on one on absolutely one category, and and well, I got stumped on the managers. Managers hard, Mm -hmm. but the number one category outside the managers that I got stumped on was tag teams. And if I had a sixth round pick, it would have been the world's greatest tag team, Shelton Benjamin and Charlie Haas. To further back, that's what I was kind of surprised when you took American Alpha because I thought you were going to take those two. So the, the reason why I took American Alpha was because I thought that someone was going to take World's Greatest Tag Team number like as their tag team number one. Yeah, and I just like that. That's my sixth round pick to further solidify the group would have been those two guys because those two guys in ring not only as uh, as their careers unfolded, you know, after the World's Greatest Tag Team broke up is those guys taught everybody. Every single person you're watching on TV has had interaction with Shelton Benjamin or Charlie Haas at one point in their in their careers. Yeah. And look, look at like uh, even someone like Mia Yim. Mia, Mia Yim was trained by Shelton Benjamin. Like they're – there are, you know, you you there are there their uh fingerprints are on a lot of stuff. That that was my sixth round pick if I had one, was that the world's greatest tag team and Outlast is unstoppable with the world's greatest tag team and American Alpha coming up with them uh, as younger talent. You, you win every day of the week. Right on. 
Was that going to be a pick, though? Rose Gray's tag team? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah, you assume uh, you two weren't going to pick that, so it's okay if we're out of order or anything like that. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm sorry. It's fine. It's fine. What? Um, yeah, we'll, we'll just go down the order. What do you, what do you, what do you want, Yumper? So, um, if I was going to go with like, there's, so there's a, uh, I was going to go with the main eventer that could kind of, can fit in here because he was kind of like, um, you know, he, he, he kind of kept evolving himself and kind of was the back, but, uh, I, and I wasn't going to go with a tag. I was going to go with, um. Los Gringos Locos, which is like Eddie Guerrero and Art Bar as my tag team, but I'm gonna stick with Eddie because I think Eddie just no, the way he transitioned team. himself into I love him. I love from Eddie. you know when he was a, when he actually got pushed into the LWO spot, like that's where he kind of took off, where he got better on the mic. Well, yeah, because he could he got to yeah. be himself. Another one, and, um, like mm-hmm. a lot of these guys, just be your fucking selves. You guys are and, and Eddie Guerrero had been in the business for. 20 years when he was 25 yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> yes and he could kind of play that blend that line like between heel and uh you know baby face and i think that like all the guys basically on my in my stable can do that as well except gary hart but i mean gary hart is badass though i i always loved the uh when i got into you know got really really into wrestling the first big like the first big cry i had was eddie uh when eddie passed because I was just entertained and, and, and enthralled with his entire everything that he was doing until until he passed away. Uh, or when his book came out, I read his book, you know, and, and all that stuff. Um, I love to love Scringos Locos like uh, gimmick that he had because you got this guy who's like if a Mexican wrestler was a was a, was a word, that's what he looks like, and he comes out in the American flag draped like leather jackets with the tassels and all that shit. Oh my god, it is it's perfect. Like that Eddie Guerrero, which I'm sure we could talk at for for hours. Yep. The is, best part about that stable though, uh, CBG is not just them, but also they had Luis Spicoli as Madonna's boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> that always cracks me up that they had him run that gimmick. Spico- Spicoli was actually in consideration to be my manager. I fucking love Louis Spicoli, but but when I went with this second generation idea, I was like I had to scrap it. Yeah, I love Eddie. I love everything about Eddie, and uh, mm. I'm pissed I don't have him in my group um, because I didn't like. Yeah, I had a plan, and uh, and it, he just didn't fit. But like we talk about, like Kurt Angle, he could wrestle with the best of them. He could play the chicken shit heel. He played the comedy gimmick almost better than anyone um he was so damn good and it just sucks that we lost him so Definitely early too young. Um, oh yeah. yeah so yeah i love eddie all right never, um, seen, uh, never seen any of the punk eddie guerrero stuff when eddie yes. was out of wwe that's oh, yes. fucking great that was when eddie was starting to get clean too so you remember when uh eddie gave uh uh big show those special burritos and he's in that stall and he's crying and, and screaming and then he just comes in and kicks in the, the door stall, and he's like, "I'm sorry." Oh. <laughs> he's like, he can't literally can't get into the ring because he's shitting himself. Just, oh, yeah, and just the comedy it's, too, like the uh, you know everybody talks about when he went against uh, Mr. Anderson, just with oh, the yeah. chair, with the chair gimmick, slamming the chair on the floor and then falling on the floor, tossing the chair to him and then falling on the floor like he got hit. You know, just the comedy with him. He was like a great mind, and like at 38, he was just so young to pass away. The stuff with yeah. China was really good too. Yes. Yeah. Oh yes. yeah. Latino heat. Latino being, heat. Being too sick I, to compete. I should have worn my. I should have worn my. I got a Latino heat shirt. <laughs> being, being too sick to compete, and he's got like a blanket on himself in the in the in the in the corner, <laughs> and he's that. like coughing, and it's so good, so good. Um. Yeah. But it's are we ready? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't. So, you guys want to share Eddie Guerrero? There's so no, <laughs> no, that, that was a great pick. He got it. Um, there's so many ways I want to go about this. I really do want to do something. I thought about like you know another you know mid two thousands, but I'm gonna go with the future, and I'm going with the voice, and he's the voice of the future, and he just fits in so well. I'm going MJF. I think he would fit in so well with this. That's favorite. perfect. That's it, perfect. It, he he would be the young guy that these that that this heel stable is grooming he, 
to be See, the damn guy. Valori just fucking solidified his stable. I should never ask for another fucking round. So you yeah. got CM Punk as like the guy that wants to be the leader. Mm-hmm. And then MJF would be like the young boy in the group. A young boy, yes. That's exactly how I'm picturing it. It's almost like a, a version of evolution, up. if you will. Yeah. I, I might be stealing evolution's gimmick in, in this. It, it stable, actually is. Cause yeah, because that's, that's what I'm he doing. would be the Batista, basically, right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 I like it. So uh, yeah, MJF could talk with the best of them. He's such short career so far, but he's impressed, I would say, all of us in 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 that short time. And he's the future of professional wrestling. So uh, I think he fits in well with this. Right on. Well, I'm going to go. Huh. So I, I was initially this whole time you guys were talking, I was like, oh, I'm just going to take Terry Funk. Like Terry Funk would be perfect. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got a guy that would go out there and just beat the shit out of people. But I'm not. Okay. Wild, Charlie. <laughs> wild card. So sixth round is the wild card. Well, you and that's another, wild that's, card. A, that's another second generation wrestler. So. Um, people don't know much about Dory Funk because he wrestled in like the 40s, you know. Um, <laughs> I am gonna go with the guy that's gonna uh finish Roman's reign. I love him, I love Cody, I love everything about Cody. It's a great, pick. Cody's, Cody's just fun. Um, mm-hmm. he, you know, I, AEW, I, 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 I don't know what to think about his run with AEW, like it made him, it made him a star. And then change your stable name to Mike. Can Trump. I do that? Can I do that? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Is it too late? Johnny. Good good call. But yeah, I, I want Cody. I'm gonna go Cody Rhodes. He would be like the he would be again, he would be like the the young boy of the group as well. He totally was, Johnny. He was, he was one of the bouncers. Roadhouse. Yeah. yeah. He was also Roadhouse. in over he was also in over the top. We don't need you here, Dad. And he also, like I told Baloney in our uh, Rocky episode, he was actually the fight choreographer for Rocky Five. Yes, the the Damn. street fights well, and stuff, right? Well, mm. One more, one more round, yo, bro. <laughs> one more round. Yep. Touch me, I, and I'll sue. <laughs> Cody <laughs> Rhodes from Go. That sound like <laughs> someone, Yumper? <laughs> yes, it does. Cody, Cody Rhodes is one of these like these these. You know, a lot of people jump on him. Uh, a lot, you know, a lot of fans jumped on him because. Oh, he left WWE and he went and he made this company as derivative of all that and whatever. And he did the, the whole throne crushing thing. And now he's with it being in WWE, they're they're eating everything he throws at him. I mean, the, the the character that he was trying to play in WWE amongst the, or AW rather, uh amongst a bunch of people doing like edgy gimmicks. Because there there are edgy gimmicks there. Like that's that's how AEW kind of functions. Yeah, to try to be what he was in AEW, and it didn't get over. And and like even the stuff that Roman said to him on Monday, which if you guys haven't seen that yet, go watch it. It's fantastic. It's you know it didn't get him over, but when you put Cody Rhodes back into the WWE system, holy shit, does it work? Yeah, because now he's given he's giving the 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 weight belt, the weight ringside, it's not getting thrown back in the ring like it did here in Chicago. Uh, you know, it's people are invested in this, not only because he is that face, but until this last promo, every everyone knows now who Dusty Rhodes is. If, you, if you're five years old, you know who Dusty Rhodes is because he made sure that you knew. He, and he did. He, he did dine with kings and queens. He also dined on pork and beans. So, I, I, if everyone asks me who Dusty Rhodes is, I always point them to the uh, vignette of him pumping gas and changing that woman's oil in her car. <laughs> it is the, by far one of the best vignettes I've ever seen in my life. That um, is our that is our our buddy Aloha, Mister Hands, favorite wrestler. Dusty Rhodes. Yeah, I can see. Whenever we, whenever we talk about wrestling, he always brings up Dusty Rhodes. Yeah, Mr. Hand, baby. So yeah, like. Cody is a fantastic pick and definitely fits with everything that's going on here. So I, uh, I definitely like that. He's been so telling a story. He's been telling a story for the last four or five years that, I mean, when you piece it together is something that like hasn't been seen before. And I feel like AEW fans were too like blinded to, to really uh, appreciate what he was trying to do. And a lot of it had to do, we talked about on the playback, the fact that they, they made that stipulation where he could never win the the world title 
Uh, yeah. I thought that was that was a short sighted vision that ultimately pushed him back into a or WWE, whether he wanted to or not. Okay, um, I'm sure. Sure. I, I don't. I don't think Cody and AEW did anything that he didn't want to do. I think. Right. I think Tony Khan told him, "Whatever you want to do, to Cody. Whatever you want to do, Cody. You I, want I, that I belt. You want that belt? Go get it. That's fine." Yeah, I, I believe. I believe that. But when you look at the the overall narrative that he's pushing now, that like okay, back then it's a short sighted stipulation to have him never be able to win the world title. But if you look at his story now. Yeah, that stipulation that's mean, means yeah. everything. So that's because what I'm he saying. went over there, and he wasn't able to win the world championship because of a stipulation. So he comes back home to win the world title because he can't do it anywhere else. Yeah, you know? that's what I'm saying. Where it was like he's been telling a story for four or five years. I think uh, just from him not wanting to win the world title, that stipulation. I think that was just his way of saying I can go somewhere else, be big. And not have to have a title around my waist. That was his whole thing with Triple H. And that's the reason he broke the, the, the fucking throne in the first place. Was because of his creative and how the way they were holding him back. Because he thought he was a main eventer. And if you look at just even the you know the, the way his career has gone. He's basically went about the Vince McMahon model of taking the brass ring somewhere else. He went somewhere else. Made money. It's a multi-million dollar company. He made himself bigger than life as the American Nightmare. And now he's back in WWF. You know, as a homecoming, and I would even argue like he he created that that character that that persona everything and built it up before AEW even started. When he was yeah, because he was doing on the Indies, on the Indies. And he was in Mexico too. He was doing just uh, hustling, AAA. just 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 running, man. That's what he did. And I think I think kind of on a on a smaller level, I think that's what Cardona's doing now. Yeah, yeah. I hope that guy succeeds. I love Matt Cardona. Just he's just, he's succeeded him. already. He's, he's I don't, been, I don't yeah, think I don't think there's anything fan. he needs to do anymore. He's he, yeah. yeah. He's going back though, isn't he? Yeah. Suppose I, yeah, it's yeah, healthy. Is, yeah. Yeah. They better but, give him. A, well, they better give him a the, dick load of money and let him do his fucking toy toy videos. Oh, or yeah. You know. I the the cool things I've heard about Cardona is that you know if Car- so I've heard two scenarios right. Uh, Cena wins at WrestleMania, beats Austin Theory, and then on the Raw after Mania, um, you know, he does the open challenge and it's answered by Matt Cardona. Matt Cardona goes through the match squeaky clean until Chelsea helps him win. He goes heel and then he wins the title off of Cena the night after WrestleMania. That's the, all, the, the inverse of that is. Theory wins. He put he does the same thing to mock Cena, and then Braun Breaker debuts to take the title off him, which I think is more likely. Um, but Cardona, uh, Cardona's got a place in the locker room. You know, you know he does, and you know that the moment that he comes back to WWE, he's not Zack Ryder. If they put if they put that name on him again, I'd be very surprised because for the last what three four years now. Cardona is just it's it's in everyone's mouth. Whether it's GCW, whether it's any of the other indie promotions, he's everywhere. And he had to reinvent himself twice. But yeah, with yeah. Zach Ryder, he built himself as the internet king. Yeah, he cre- he cre- he created his like he, he built yeah. his character. He knows how to market WWE. himself. He knows yeah. how to market himself without like the backing of a company, which is mm-hmm. what he's been doing his whole career, which is awesome. Yeah. So I, I saw someone ask a question just real quick before I saw I think it was Caitlin asked who are who's who's the, who's the wrestler we hate the most? Ever? Just real quick before we wrap up. I sure <laughs> before we wrap up, if anyone somebody just wants to mention that. Like real life, or you mean like in storyline? Sure. That's fine. Uh, Johnny said Ryback. That's a proud that Ryback's, like, Ryback's a good pick, yeah. man. That guy's a fucking scumbag. He's an asshole. I mean, if, if we're talking about like the worst person ever, I would go with nails. Oh, because he choked Vince. <laughs> and then he and then he and then he accused Vince of raping him. Yeah. Yeah, he was a, he was a crazy bastard. Um, I, good question. Then he went to the WCW is in the same gimmick, and he was like, they called him like the informant or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was. I'm sorry, he was like the criminal or something like that. Oh, in in. 
Are we going in wrestling or competitors? Like people who were, you know, I mean, he, everyone who is out is in. Let's say, let's wrestling. say, let's say worst person ever in the history of wrestling. Wow. Oh, oh, that's, we, that's you, opened up a you, can of worms. It's got to be Benoit, you, right? You, yeah. You DM. Yeah. yeah we, we, we shouldn't, we shouldn't, we shouldn't say that, that because no. now the entire YouTube algorithm will not push our video. There's no. also the guy from uh, WCW, Hardbody Harrison, who was like fucking sex trafficking people. Like, or there's... you can go, or you can go rock and roll Buck Zumhoff, who oh, uh, was a child molester. All right. We're off the rails. We in terms of wrestling, uh, somebody that I really dislike, especially yeah. as I got more to learn about him, is Hulk Hogan. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's not, not has a, it, it's just the fact that he the shit that he pulled with his creative control and then goes on like it says, Oh, I never had like the stuff with Macho Man to the point where Ultimate Warrior had to make a video to call him out and say, like, your relationship was all bullshit. You know what's like, funny about Hogan though? Like Hogan, if you talk to anybody that he worked with in the eighties and nineties, with the exception of like Warrior, pretty much, they're all like, Yeah, he made me a lot of money. I'm not gonna say anything. Yeah, which is fine. Like, it's just like right. he made everything. Yeah, like they like like he made sure like like I watched a shoot interview with King Kong Bundy. He made sure King Kong Bundy got like 50k for WrestleMania 2. Like he made sure these I mean he got a mil like a million, but he made sure these guys got everything that they wanted out of those matches. And he can also do I, this for you too, Brian. Well, I could set you up with Hiro Matsuda, this Japanese guy. I, I, I I'm gonna Hogan, get off by cranking your knob. <laughs> the, the way that Hogan, yeah, like, the thing that sucks with Hogan is that like you know, Hogan defines an entire uh generation of wrestling. Two. But you can even yeah, say yeah. Two. Oh, yeah, two. Absolutely. You can say, yeah, yeah. You can yeah, say no, two you're, generations. No, you're dead right. You're yeah. Dead rights. Yeah, yeah. Two two eras of wrestling. And the thing that I don't like when you know, obvi the, the other obvious stuff that makes him an unsavory individual is like, oh brother, that tombstone pile driver really cut my neck. That, and I'm like, no, it didn't. Oh, Shut that, up. That, the lies are fun. Those are fun, though. There's oh the, the, the there's whole Hogan line. Oh, dude. There's like, the, Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Just, uh, just like the lies, like you're saying, that Kevin Sullivan, like used to have a pod called The Hell of a Deal. Yeah. He talks about how Hogan would switch shit all the time in WCW, all the time, and the the fact that they had this long buildup of Sting finally beating him, and he wanted to make it look like it wasn't clean, just to be an asshole when he told Nick Patrick to do that, to just count it regular, and it made the whole fucking it made Bret Hart coming out look like an idiot for one. It made it look so stupid on like your biggest pay per view. Just because you didn't want to lose clean. Like, how fucking yeah. full of shit are you that to do that? You know what I mean? Like, come on. Like, you were still going to make money. My favorite Hogan story was uh, something I, I heard in the on the Jim Cornette, uh, which I fucking hate, but I listened to the Jim Cornette podcast one day when they were talking about Hogan stories. Hate listening. And he, he, used to tell, he used to tell people that, Hulk Hogan used to tell people that, uh, Elvis Presley told him that he was his favorite, his favorite wrestler, wrestler, which is funny because Elvis died like a year before Hulk Hogan debuted. So, <laughs> yeah, I think, I, that one is good. And the uh, that he wrestled uh, 24 hours straight. And it, it was like, or it was a 24 hours straight. He, he also wrestling. said that he, he also said that he broke his spine slamming Andre the Giant. I can't. I can't remember what the what was the quote for the. It was either he wrestled wrestled twenty four hours, and it was something about like time zones. That, uh, oh, man, what was it? it? Was it was it was basically that like, uh, like Hogan. That's not. Oh no, it was he wrestled in two continents in the same day, and it's like that's not possible because of time zones, and also you try you like you, you were you were in a plane for half of those. Dude, you can look at uh, the lies of that on the website. Like one of them says he got a make a wish kid to show to a show he wasn't on. Like the, uh, he was with Terry, uh, Kerry Von Eric a day, but a few days before he died. Like, no, stupid. Shit. Like, <laughs> shut up. I think Kerry was in jail a few days before he died. Um, but okay, we're at two hours, so I got, I got, we got, we got, we got to cut this one out. And also, Baloney has a video to make. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> Shit, I forgot about that. <laughs> Shit, oh, oh. she's been she's been waiting oh. upstairs for hours. Um, so yeah. Um... Oh, 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 oh. 
are we gonna are we gonna have Jim Ross uh, commentate? I might have to. Yeah, I might have to have. Some oh God! Comments. And then barely like this is a slobber knocker. By God! Broke it in half. By God! He's broken it in half. By God! God. Half, by God. Stomp, oh, God. Stomping um, a mud hole, walking it dry. <laughs> Austin, Baloney, Baloney, Baloney. Oh my Lord! Man, okay. Uh, family. <laughs> any, anybody yeah. got anything they want to plug here? Baloney, uh, Yump. Uh, CBG. CBG has his show Monday nights. I'm going to be on Monday, uh, 6 p.m. on Twitch. CBG. I'm the punk driver. Punk driver. Yeah, the uh, the Monday night punk driver is being invaded by the Baloney Club uh, on on Monday night from uh, from 6 to uh, 7 p.m. over on uh, twitch.tv slash the geeks and noobs. Uh, if any of you guys know Baloney, uh, you know he knows wrestling at this point, and we are going to be talking everything WrestleMania uh, uh, leading up to to that. And then uh, stick with us for a bit. We're going to be watching Raw the entire night. It's a good it's a good show, guys. You should check it out if you're into wrestling. Um, they, yeah, they watch they basically watch Raw together and 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 comment on it, and and really good banter, really good show. You do a good job with that one, uh, CPG. Thank you. And then uh, Whiskey at Comiskey, you guys want to talk about that for a minute? Yeah, uh, Whiskey at Comiskey opening day. Um, you home guys opener. are helping us out. Hope, home opener for the White Sox. Sadistic Penguin Studio is providing beers. We'll be there cooking and bringing whiskey. We're going to bring uh, some Knob Creek products. Hopefully, we get some merch that we'll be giving away. That is, uh, hopefully, gets here in time because it's in transit. Um Uh-oh. we'll be talking about all of that Monday night on the podcast. We have a lot of details to hammer are, out, a lot of details. Are you going to mention the uh, the f- the food menu for uh uh I I'll, I'll talk to Jason. He's he's planning a whole th- a whole thing. So it's going to be awesome. You're not are, you're not going to bring a pig, are you? We uh, we will not be bringing a pig. Wouldn't that um, be fucking awesome though if we could bring That a would pig? be a lot be roasting a pig or a goat. I mean, they're goat? Being, goat? They're barely we're roasting it. a goat. They're, yeah, they're, get some, a goat. Some, are we? Are yeah. we all no, Greek? Get some goat. Serbians yeah, in there, yeah. man. Call them off. Let's fucking some do beer. that. Yeah, I, I'd be down for some birria and lat B. Lat B stands for birria, but they're barely mm-hmm. letting us bring tables. So you think they're gonna let us bring a bring a <laughs> the the pig spit roast? roast. <laughs> so, yeah, that's gonna be a fun time. So uh, yeah, so we'll we'll have more details Monday night, 9 p.m. on the awesome. podcast. Cool. Um. So I got one thing to plug, Bri. Yep, you're on so, Sunday, right? Yep. So Sunday means so Swole and I have decided to go weekly. We're gonna try that out. This Sunday we're doing 80s cult movies. Uh five from Swole, five from myself. We're gonna be start at seven o'clock on the Statistic Penguin Studios YouTube channel. Sweet. And don't forget to sub- subscribe to this uh, Statistic Penguin Studios YouTube channel. Also make sure to uh to like this show. Um I'm going to be on next week again. Uh, I'm going to have a couple buddies on uh, Bennett Carroll as well as our buddy John Shakespeare. Uh, we're going to be drafting. It's a night before WrestleMania. So we're going to do another wrestling one. Uh, we're going to draft our favorite WrestleMania matches of all time. Um, so that should be a good one. Uh, I believe in the next couple of days, we're going to, I'm going to get a, uh, another pop-up socks out. I will be announcing that a little further uh, tomorrow. Um, guests to, to be decided i guess because it's called pop-up socks so we'll uh <laughs> we'll we'll go we'll move as we go but uh but yeah again uh, thank you for watching thank you for listening this is uh it's getting drafty in here episode 13 in the books thanks a lot guys thank you brian no thank problem. you as always thank you thanks guys